ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Bowl Week. Where history is made and legends live on. Down by six now. Three seconds left. Third and ten at the SMU 41-yard line. McMahon throwing for the end zone. State safety Quentin Michael may be the best player in the Western Athletic Conference and he'll need his best game today if they are to stop the double-edged passing and scrambling threat of this man, Iowa State senior quarterback Seneca Walls. Welcome you live to a sold-out Bronco Stadium in beautiful Boise, Idaho for the 6th Annual Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl featuring the Broncos of Boise State and the Cyclones of Iowa State. Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Punch, along with Randy Wright. Thank you for letting us kick off your New Year's Eve with some college football fireworks. And, Randy, uh, despite the fact that Boise State finished runner-up in this conference a year ago, they were snubbed by the Bulls. So their motto this year was leave no doubt. And they didn't leave any doubt. 11 wins on the year, perfect 8 no in the whack, and a top 15 ranking, and they did it all with explosive offense. Boy, they've got a great offense. They lead the country in a couple of important categories, uh, total offense and scoring, and they do it mainly with two guys. Their quarterback, Ryan Dinw Dinwiddie, he is only thrown three interceptions all year, completed 67% of his passes, and of course, the running back, Brock Forsey, led the nation in scoring with 29 touchdowns. And for Iowa State, it was a tale of two seasons. The Cyclone Wagon began to roll early on. They were 6-1 with a top-10 ranking, and then the wheels fell off. They lost five of their last six, and Randy, to make matters worse today, they're without two of their defensive starters. Well, the Iowa State people just informed us that their two safeties, Mark Timmons and Jermaine Billups, have been ruled ineligible for today's game by the Big 12 office, so they may have to try and stop this offense without two of their safeties. Well, to update more on what's happening with those players and eligible, let's check in with the third member of our team. Here's Heather Collins. Well, we did get confirmation, guys, that their two starting safeties will not play in this game. They are ineligible. Everybody down here on the sideline is very tight-lipped, but I did get some winks and some head shakes that indicated that those two will not take the field today for the humanitarian goal. Back to you, Jerry. Thank you very much, Heather. There's Dan McCarney, the eight-year head, eighth year head coach at Iowa State. He was 2001 uh, Big 12 Coach of the Year a year ago. Three straight bowl appearances for the Cyclones. And Boise State has won the toss and elected to take the football. And David Michael will try to pull that one back to the, about the 20-yard line. And one of the reasons that Boise State leads the nation in scoring and total offense, this man who triggers it all, junior quarterback Ryan Dinwiddie out of Elk Grove, California. He missed four games this year with a broken right leg suffered against Arkansas back on September 7th. His backs and receivers, well, keep an eye on Western Athletic Conference Offensive Player of the Year, senior tailback Brock Forsey. He gets it done. Also leads the nation, by the way, in scoring. back to pass, has a completion, and immediately nailed. It'll be ruled incomplete at the 21-yard line. Well, up front for the Broncos, the strength of their offensive line, right up the middle, three seniors, Huff at center, and Vian and Navist are the guards. All the pressure from this unit comes from the right side, where Jordan Karstens and Tyson Smith combined for 24 tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Boy, take a look at this hit. Iowa State coming out, playing aggressive right away there. You see the safety, Anthony Forrest, getting a quick start today. Surprising start. His head was in the game right off the bat. Second and 10 for the Broncos. And Forrest, he will get the handoff and be nailed with uh, maybe a half a yard gain. Cyclone linebackers Lloyd is the team's defensive co-MVP. He was the MVP a year ago at the uh, Mainstay Independence Bowl against Alabama. 
We talked about the safeties. The new starters were, are Anthony Forrest and Steve Parrish. Now, Forrest has played a lot, but Steve Parrish, he's new, he's young, very inexperienced. There's a look at Forrest. Third and 11, opening possession for the Broncos. And when he looking deep and overthrows the intended receiver. Doc, one of the things that Iowa State wanted to do early today was come out and make this game physical. They wanted to take the game to Boise State. There were some questions with whether they gave up late in the year, especially in the UConn game. And I'd say the first couple of plays here, Iowa State's come out been very aggressive, and they've laid some good wood. And let's look at Keith Shuttler, the senior from Litchfield Park, Arizona. Averaging 40.8 yards a punt. For the Broncos. Punting from his own seven-yard line. Just does get it off. And Todd Miller will take it on his 40. Cut back. He's already returned two for touchdowns this year. And be swung. No, still on his feet. Up to midfield. Cyclones of Iowa State are led by Sacramento, California senior quarterback Seneca Wallace, the Heisman Trophy candidate and Johnny Unitas finalist on so many single season records and their backs and receivers. Co-offensive MVP Lane Danielson, only the second Cyclone in school history to exceed 1,000 yards in a single season. Ten for the Cyclones, they will put it up. And he cannot quite hang on. Up front for Iowa State, co-captain Zach Butler at center, and left guard Bob Montgomery are both second team all Big 12 selections. Bobby Hammer at defensive end has been the team's most outstanding defensive lineman for the second year in a row now. You gotta like a defensive lineman named Hammer. <laughs> That's truly appropriate. One of the strongest players on the team. Inside hand off to Brian Thompson, and he will be swarmed under. May have lost about a yard. A part of that swarm with the linebackers for Boise State, Andy Avalos leads the team with 94 total tackles. Quentin Michael at strong safety has started every game of his Bronco career. 50th start today. You take a look at him there. Boy, what a player he is. Three-time defensive MVP. Opening possession for the Cyclones, third and 11. Rain is falling. It's a return to freezing rain. It may be snow before halftime. Also talking to run, he does it so well. And Scamper inside the 45 will be right near the first down marks. Boy, and this is what makes Seneca Wallace so dangerous. He originally had plenty of time to pass in the pocket, but there was good coverage. And when he decided to run, he gets a wonderful block from Jack Whitmer, his wide receiver. Good coverage, good coverage. See if we can pick up the block from Whitmer, his wide receiver. Missed the block, but that enabled Wallace to get the first down yardage. And Randy, no one more frustrated about their finish, losing five of the last six, and that guy right there, Seneca Wallace, what a competitor. Well, and that's why he is such a competitor, and they did things so well in the first half of the year, but a big reason they finished one and five, just a brutal, brutal road schedule. Turnovers hurt him in those final games, including a disappointing loss. And Seneca will call a timeout and talk it over. We are still scoreless here at Bronco Stadium between the Cyclones and the Broncos. Back with the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. From a place called Boise, we invite you to escape to a place so unexpected, a world so incredible. It has the power to ignite your imagination. Come visit the city that will capture your heart, your mind, and your soul. Here in spectacular Boise, Idaho. Original. Authentic. Powerful. 
now, the next big thing from Nissan, our national year-end event. 0.9% APR financing on most new Nissans. So, what's next? Just the end date. 0.9% ends January 6th. All around the world, Siemens helps companies prosper by providing them with systems and controls that assure quality, regardless of quantity. Whatever the product, wherever consumers consume, we want to help them save our life better. <laughs> they call this art? I'll tell you what I call it, brother. <laughs> it symbolizes my frustration of committing to a phone plan I don't always need. You should be down at 10 10 to 20, little dude. Yeah, it's a great phone service with no monthly commitment. With 10 10 to 20, all calls up to 20 minutes or 99 cents. It's cheap, whether you use it a little or a lot. That is a great deal. Now, this speaks to me. It says cheap. Dial 10 10 to 20. Brother! Back at Bronco Stadium of the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Jerry Punch, Randy Wright, Heather Cox. Second possession, actually the first possession for Iowa State. And set up the balls. Inside and off and about a yard max. Let's check it on the sidelines with Heather Cox. Well, Jerry, it's amazing that Seneca Wallace is even playing Division I football, much less a quarterback. His long journey to aim actually started in Oregon State. He was a DB and a kick returner, but he never saw the field, so he returned to his hometown of Sacramento, where he didn't think he'd ever play football again after his mom was diagnosed with cancer. His parents talked him into returning to the gridiron at a local JC. Believe it or not, he was a wide receiver, didn't play quarterback until the wide receiver got hurt, much to the Cyclones' relief. He's been quarterback ever since. Very inspirational story about Seneca there, Heather. As uh, Michael Wagner will make the carry for about four. Iowa State, Doc, coming out here trying to run the ball. They really struggled all year with their rushing offense, averaging just 145 yards a game. But they felt today they're a more physical team. They're bigger up front with their offensive line than Boise State is with their defensive line. And if they can get a running game going, that will open up the passing game for Seneca even more. Steve Brickey, the offensive coordinator. Remember what happened to uh, the Broncos against Arkansas, they, who just used their physical. This up front, and Seneca Wallace tucks it and runs, 30-25, chased out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Boy, great run by Seneca Wallace. This guy beat you more with his legs in the passing game than any quarterback in college ball. He has a great feel for when to run, when not to run. This is a designed quarterback draw. He has a little patience, though. He sits back there, lets the rush come upfield, and then he's got enough speed to get to the outside. Take a look here again. He just gets to the outside, and because of his quickness, he avoids a lot of hard hits. Opening drive for the Cyclones. Wallace again looks downfield, has a receiver at the 20, inside the 15. That is Lane Danielson. Lane Danielson has really been the go-to guy. As you see, Seneca Wallace taking a hit right after that throw, not getting up quite as quickly as his uh, coach would like him to, and he's still down. Take a look. We'll see what happened to Seneca after he made the throw. There was a blitz coming by Boise State. He got rid of it, and it looks like the defensive end just rolled into him. Bobby Hammer down on the ground, rolled right into his foot as it was planted on the ground. And, boy, what a blow for the Iowa State Cyclones this would be. And he's not putting any weight on that leg as he's being helped off the sideline. And Chris Love will come in. He's the backup, the sophomore from Round Rock, Texas, as they carry uh, Seneca Wallace off. Chris Love, not a lot of experience this year. As you said, Doc, he's a sophomore, but only thrown the ball six times, completing three of them for one touchdown. A totally different style of quarterback, though. Big kid, 6'5", 215, not a runner, more of a drop-back passer. You saw his numbers there a moment ago, and penalty flag slide. That's a movement up front. 
Boy, so often this happens when you get a new quarterback that comes into the game. He's a little nervous. They were a little slow. You saw the signal there by our referee, Ken Rivera. And so many times he's a little slow getting up to the line of scrimmage, a little unsure of himself, and somebody moves. As you can see, take a look at Seneca Wallace again. Looks like his left leg is planted on the ground, and Bobby Hammer just went right into that. And, boy, that, that did not look very good. More like a hyperextension on that left knee. We'll check, we'll check him on the sidelines. We'll update that momentarily. Meanwhile, the Cyclone drive continues. And dropping the ball is Love. He picks it up and will be tackled for a loss at about the 19. Steve Brickley, the offensive coordinator, now needs to decide. You've got second and 15, a young quarterback in there. They don't have a great running game, and it's been a problem all year. We just alluded to that. If he throws a pass, I think it's going to be a quick rhythm throw, or he's going to throw it to the outside. We take a look again here at Love, and he just has the ball slip right out of his hand. Got presence of mind to get back on and try and get what he can. Look for a draw here or a pass to the outside. I don't think he's going to throw the ball over the middle in a lot of traffic. Quarterback Love on the option will keep it. 15 down to the 12-yard line. Two deeper by Chris Love and Western. Seneca Wallace up walking around on the sidelines there talking to some of the uh, Iowa State training staff. Well, it looks like he's, he's obviously putting all of his weight on it and, and is walking around, which is a huge improvement from what we saw just a couple of seconds ago. And even if he loses some mobility, having him in the game would be huge. If you can jump up and down like that, I think there's a good chance we can see him again. Third and ten for the Cyclones, trying to get the end zone in the opening possession. Pass is thrown away by Love. Let's check in on the sidelines. Uh, Heather, what's the situation on Seneca? Well, Doc, I feel like I'm doing your job, but I did talk to the medical staff, and it is his knee. But they do believe he will go back in. He's not going to go in for x-rays, but will return to the field on the next offensive possession. All right, thank you, Heather. Good news for the uh, Cyclone faithful. Seneca back on in the next possession. Haven't had a knee injury, a major knee injury. Sometimes when those things happen, it's like you get kicked in the shin and it stings for a couple of seconds and you need a little break in order to get that pain out of there before you find out how badly it really is hurt. It looks like Seneca may be okay. Pretty hard field goal attempt for Adam Beneke, the first team all Big 12 kicker is up and good. And the Cyclones are on the board first here at Bronco Stadium. The big concern, though, not on the field, on the bench. Their leader, Seneca Wallace. You are a cyber jock. You bid on memorabilia. You're addicted to fantasy football. You outscore your kids in these sports PC games. You need more memory, tough guy. Fantasy freeze up. Don't let your system slow you down. A memory upgrade from Crucial.com can speed up your computer so you can keep up with the pros. You are a cyber jock. Crucial.com. The memory experts. Rugged. Authentic. Original. Now, the next big thing from Nissan, our national year-end event. 0.9% APR financing on the 2003 Nissan Xterra. So, what's next? Just the end date. 0.9% ends January 6th. Early in the morning when I wake up, I think, have I dreamt this whole thing? I get up and realize that JetBlue is serving tens of thousands of people on a daily basis. We started 16 years ago with two people in one room. Our objective was to become the leading advertising and marketing services company in the world. Growing up in the Detroit area, washing cars for a buck 75 an hour was a great way to learn business from the ground up. Sun Microsystems is the best provider of network equipment for the world. What I love about building a company is changing what's possible. And trying to do something that has never been done before. The way you succeed is by having a very clear vision and then executing that. The day we went public was a huge birth of a new idea and a new company. We knew we had to be a NASDAQ listed company. What NASDAQ gives you is global name. It gives us a platform, a stage on which to operate in every country of the world. WPP, JetBlue, Sun Microsystems, listed on NASDAQ. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Presented by Crucial.com. Performance matters at Crucial Technology. Visit the memory experts today at Crucial.com. And in part by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. Back in beautiful Boise, you can see some of the activities that people enjoy out here in this beautiful part of the country. And back here with the Cyclones, jump out to a 3-0 lead, and really important to get that kind of lead, especially with Seneca Wallace sitting on the sideline. And Tony Young kick it off. <clears throat> Brock Posey uh, takes it back, has an opening near side, 40, 45, and finally brought down at the 46-yard line. Boy, you can see Brock Forsey. We talked to his offensive coordinator yesterday, Chris Peterson, and when he came in, he met Forsey, and he said, boy, this guy cannot be our starting tailback. And then he started looking at film and looking at more film and seeing workouts. He said, this guy just has a way of making plays, whether it's as a running back in the running game, the passing game, or in the kickoff return game. And this is a prime example of it right here. The only thing he lacks as a complete big-time NFL player would be that breakaway speed. And there's 42, Nick Linder, who was injured on the return, the left cornerback, a backup. And, Doc, that's going to be big because Nick Linder has moved over to safety to back up Anthony Forrest and Steve Paris, who moved up to start because of the ineligibility ruling of Timmons and Billups. So they lose the depth there as well. Second possession of the game for the Broncos, and that pass complete up to about the 47. Ryan Dinwiddie, what a year he's had this year. Thrown for over 5,000 yards in his career. Over 2,100 this year. And in the second game of the season, broke his ankle. Missed four and a half games. Came back and really is just now healthy. Played the rest of the year on that ankle. Wasn't 100%. Just now, though, is healthy. And movement will cost him five yards. Uh, And Rivera, the referee. All right, it's now full start, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Capital One Bowl Week continues with two games on ESPN. Today at 3.30 Eastern, Bradley Van Pelt and the Mountain West champion Colorado State Rams battle Conference USA co-champion TSU in the 44th annual. Then at 7.30 Eastern, Casey Clawson leads the Tennessee Volunteers against E.J. Henderson and the Maryland Terrapins. And when he tried to dump it off, and it is incomplete. He ducked it up in the, the front of the pocket, trying to dump the pass off short. The Brock forcing his tailback. Doc, you can see with the weather being what it is, the rain coming down, this is going to turn into a game of field position. Boise State, they have some deep threat weapons in their offense, but they're trying to keep things under control, move the chains, get a feel for the turf, get a feel for the weather, get a feel for the conditions. Again, it is raining, and it may turn to sleet. Some snow before the day is over. Didn't want he back to pass. Looks deep. Has a receiver downfield and just quite can't get to it. That is Jay Swilly. They call him first down Jay. First down Swilly because most of his receptions go for either first downs or touchdowns. Pretty good coverage back there, though, by Steve Paris, especially as Dinwiddie scrambling around. This is what Iowa State wants to do, put pressure on Dinwiddie. He steps up nicely in the pocket, has Swilly open, but just throws the ball a little bit too far. Overall, it was pretty good coverage. There you see the reaction, takes the hit. Boy, he knows he had a man open, had an opportunity there that let get away from him. And Keith Shuttler will punt it away for the Broncos. Todd Miller back to receive. A high floater, and Miller will take it, does not bear catch now, as the penalty flags will come in for the halo violation, and they will add 10 yards onto that return. Well, we talked about this being a game of field position, and the Cyclones now are going to get a little better field position. And as you said, Doc, the interference with that fair catch there is going to give Iowa State the ball on the positive side of the 25-yard line. Halo violation again. What? 
Uh, we're not going to be able to pick up the call here. The hail violation, one of the rules most often called in college football. And we'll be back in Boise with the Cyclones leading three to nothing. The Cyclones with the ball. And will Seneca Wallace come back on the field? It's the most wonderful week. It's a New Year's Eve bash. Casey Clawson and the Vols battled Butkus Award winner E.J. Henderson and the Turfs. Capital One Bowl Week continues with the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl tonight at 7.30 on ESPN. College basketball on ESPN. Rashad McCants in North Carolina take it strong to the hole against Miami. Then Michigan State looks to shut down Oklahoma and Hollis Price. It's a full Saturday of college shoots on ESPN and ESPN2. Just because you're getting a deal online doesn't mean you're getting something useful. Until now, go to Cox.com and save on digital cable and high-speed internet. Get great deals at Cox.com and feel better about what you get online. Now, when you sign up for Cox high-speed internet at Cox.com, we'll send you a free webcam. If you currently have Quest phone service, you're paying more than you have to. Switch to Cox Digital Telephone and you'll receive great savings every month over Quest with dependable service from Cox Communications. Plus, enjoy the same popular features Quest offers for less money. And you can even keep your existing phone number. So get reliable phone service for less than you're paying Quest and keep your existing phone number. Call Cox Communications at 623-594-1144 and start saving today. On behalf of Crucial Technology, we'd like to welcome you to the 2002 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. This is our fourth year as title sponsor of the bowl game, and we're really pleased we've got the best matchup ever in the history of the bowl. We have WAC champion Boise State against Big 12 representative Iowa State. Should be a great game. And just as the game has continued to grow, Crucial has continued to grow as well. As a division of Micron Technology, we are now one of the world's leading providers of memory upgrades. Uh, we're happy to be associated with the bowl game again, and enjoy the game. Thanks, Mike. We appreciate your involvement in college football. Iowa State back on offense, and no Seneca Wallace. Love the backup quarterback. Hands off inside. A big hole for Michael Wagner. One of the events they have out here is the Black Angus Beef Bowl. Last Friday night, three players from each team participated in the Beef Bowl. Almost 400 ounces of prime rib was consumed by the two teams in just under two hours. Iowa State out, munched the Broncos 198 ounces to 196. Iowa State's Matt Bacchus devoured the most red meat, eating 113 ounces. When it was over, I don't think anybody was saying, where's the beef? <laughs> A lot of special events with the players here. The humanitarian bowl, handoff, and stood up is Wagner again. He will be near the first down mark. Both teams wanted to come in today, Doc, and stop the run. The weather conditions will even put more of an emphasis on that. Boise State, a little better balance. So you would think they could go to the passing game quicker as you take a look at the rain coming down. But I got to say, Iowa State's defense done a great job so far. Held Boise State's offense to two three and outs. We just joined the Seneca Wallace went down on the uh, opening possession. He was hit after throwing the football, hit on that left knee. He has not come back in the football game. You know, Doc, the fact that he's not being attended to and he's still on the field is huge for Iowa State. Love trying to dive, dive across for the first down, and he will have it. What I mean, Doc, by being on the field, he's not in the locker room. He's on the sideline and not being attended to. Maybe they're just letting that pain go away a little bit. Plus, what happened after the last possession, Chris Love got a chance to come over, meet with his coaches, go over a few things, get some questions answered, talk to Seneca Wallace, and I'm sure he feels a little more comfortable on the field right now than he did that first possession. And if you're ahead and you're moving the football, why not let Seneca stand over there and uh, let that knee uh, rest a little bit and give Chris Love, the sophomore, some playing time here in the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Love back to pass. And has a receiver down inside the 50. That's a tight end, Kyle Knock. Beautiful throw by Chris Love. He gets out on the bootleg and throws a nice ball to his tight end, Kyle Knock. That was a pretty good job of coverage, and he laid that ball right out there. And there's nothing like that first completion, especially a tough one like that, to build your confidence as a young quarterback who comes in. At the front goal, 46, first to 10. Second Iowa State Cyclone Drive. Here in the midpoint of the first quarter. 
Hand off the tailback, and he is swarmed behind the line of scrimmage for a two-yard loss. Capital One Bowl Week continues with two games on ESPN today at 3.30 Eastern, Fresno State and Georgia Tech in the Silicon Valley Football Classic. Then at 10.30 Eastern, two explosive offenses in the San Francisco Bowl. Air Force meets Lee Suggs and Virginia Tech Hokies. Take a look at a couple of those tailbacks there. Boy, what a dynamic duo they have. Over 2,000 yards. Wow. They call them the untouchables. Frank Beamer's bunch from up at Virginia Tech. Later today, and they fumble the snap. Love did not get a hold of it on the shotgun snap, and will follow it for a loss. Doc, it looked like the snap was a little low, but I'm sure Chris Love is a little nervous in there, trying to pick his eyes up and look at the cover. See, the ball comes a little bit too low to the outside. Nothing Chris Love could do about that. Good heads-up play, falling on that ball rather than picking it up and trying to make something happen. Now you got third and 17. Don't think Iowa State needs to do anything foolish here. Maybe a draw, maybe a screen to the outside. Pump the ball down. Keep positive field position. Love looking downfield has a receiver and whistles will blow before the play can get off. Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl in Boise, Idaho for the Iowa State Cyclones, Boise State Broncos. I'm Randy Wright with Dr. Jerry Punch and Heather Cox. Right now the Cyclones have things going their way. Three-point lead early, actually uh, towards the end of the first quarter here. Michael Wagner, he will get maybe a yard, yard and a half. Good call by Iowa State offensive coordinator Steve Brickley. Run a draw, try and get what positive yards you can. Low risk play, you punt the ball down there. The wind has really subsided, so it's not too much of a factor, but what wind there is appears to be at the Cyclones back. You can see the rain coming down, and there's Steve Brickley taking the sip right there of water. You can see the rain coming down, and, and that is a factor. And Troy Blankenship will kick it away, the freshman out of Cedar Rapids for the Cyclones. And Tim Gilligan, who never fair catches a punt, waiting to receive back on his own 15. Floated, Gilligan is on 10, cuts it back, and will be tackled just inside the 15-yard line. Broncos take over the ball when they come back on offense on the 15-yard line. Brock Corsi, one of the most exciting backs in the country, will be on the field. You are a cyber jock. You bid on memorabilia. You're addicted to fantasy football. You outscore your kids in these sports PC games. You need more memory, tough guy. Fantasy freeze up. Don't let your system slow you down. A memory upgrade from Crucial.com can speed up your computer so you can keep up with the pros. You are a cyber jock. Crucial.com. The memory experts. Original. Authentic. Powerful. Now, the next big thing from Nissan. Our national year-end event. 0.9% APR financing on most new Nissans. So, what's next? Just the end date. 0.9% ends January 6th.
according to ESPN, a great holiday gift. And back in Boise, Idaho, the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. I'm Jerry Punch, Andy Wright, Heather Cox. And there's a look at uh, Brock Forsey. Leads the nation in scoring this year. The uh, offensive MVP of the Washington Athletic Conference. And you might notice I have a little bit of laryngitis. Uh, you might know I think it's laryngitis. I apologize for your, my squeakiness here. I'll try and give you as much of a break as I can, Doc. I'll, t I'll talk all you want. You just let me know. Okay. <laughs> All yours, Randy. Take a look at the Bowl Challenge Cup there. The Big Ten, 2-0. and Three, uh, several games left to go. Five teams left to go in that. The Big East, 2-1. and and, and the WAC where Boise State is, 0-1, trying to change that today. Iowa State doing a great job of keeping this Boise State offense off of the field. Time of possession, nine and a half minutes for Iowa State. Only two and a half for the Broncos. Hand off again to Forsey, and he fights his way up to the 30-yard line. Take a look at the whack schedule in the bowls. Hawaii started off with a loss to Tulane. That was an upset. Of course, Iowa State and Boise State here today. And then in the Silicon Valley Bowl, Fresno State against Georgia Tech. We had a flag on that play right there. Side. Defense. Haley's the play. First down. One of the things that Iowa State wanted to do today, blitz. They want to put pressure on Boise State, and Boise State's only lost this year to Arkansas. Arkansas got to Dinwiddie seven times in the first half, a lot of that by bringing pressure. Dinwiddie back to pass, looks up field, and trying to get back to the football, but can't get there is Lou Fanuki, their deep threat. Lou, the senior out of Claremont, California. Excellent coverage by Atif Austin that time. Fanuki, who is, as you said, their deep threat for his career. 128 receptions, averaging 19.8 yards per reception. This is the guy they're going to throw the ball deep, but Atif Austin was having none of it. Really just excellent position, excellent coverage the whole way. Boise State, good call. Throw the ball deep. You got to let Iowa State know you're not afraid to do it. Even though it's not complete, you got to put that thought in their head. Inside handoff to Corsi, badly forward. And we'll get to maybe a yard or two up to about the 38. Take a look at the defensive coordinator there for Iowa State, John Spadini. And, well, he was a pleasure to talk to yesterday. When we asked him, what do you think you need to do today, Coach? What do you want to do? He said, we got to stop their quarterback. Forsey's a good back. He's going to get his yards in the running game. He's going to get his yards in the passing game. we got to stop the quarterback. The skies and coverages, blitz more, and get them in third and long, which they are right now. Receiver. That was the uh, running back, Corsi. Right off the first down sticks. Now bring up a punting situation for the Broncos on Boise State. I think you're seeing the weather effect Ryan did with it. This is a quarterback, guys, that completed 67% of his passes, only threw three interceptions. That's tremendous accuracy. And we've seen him miss a couple of open receivers here in this first quarter. Shuttler back to punt. And once again, Todd Miller, very dangerous as a return man. 60-yard touchdown against Tennessee Tech, 45 against Troy State. And Shuttler will get it off a low end over end. That'll bound out of bounds, a very short kick at about the 43. Football Wednesday, the Outback Bowl, playing Frank Gators of Florida and Michigan. The Wolverines, 11 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN. That should be a good one, the Wolverines. Look at Grossman of the Gators. Boy, look at those two quarterbacks. Grossman's had such a great career, but the change in the systems down there, you can see, led to those 17 interceptions. Back to pass is Love, and he couldn't hold on. 
Once again, Randy, the uh, the rain is picking up a little bit. One of these receivers are having some a tough time gripping the football. Well, well, it is, and this field is new this year, and that makes it a little more slick to begin with. Playing on grass would be much worse because the ball would get muddy, but with this new turf, it's slick as it is, and now your quarterback's throwing the wet ball. Receivers, remember, in a game situation, haven't caught a ball in over a month because that's how long the break has been, and both teams are struggling with that. Turf a moment ago. We'll ask Heather to tell us about this turf in a little bit since she lives here in Boise. And nothing doing whatsoever for Brian Thompson, the freshman running back, Chauncey Akko, the middle linebacker there to make the stop. Let's check in with Heather Cox, the sideline. Well, Jerry, much more information on the suspended players for Iowa State. There are actually four players that are not suited, actually not even on the field. They are in the stand. Three of them are starters, two of them in the secondary. Junior starting defensive back Mark Timmons is out. Safety Jermaine Billups is out. Offensive lineman Colin Menard is out. Also a starter as well as backup DB Nick Mosier. Now that fourth DB Nick Lender is also out for the game with an injured knee. So they are very, very weak in the secondary, Jerry. Thanks, Heather. The suspensions uh, this morning as the team's got off the bus. Chris Love completes the pass. Well, not to play. Great throw that time by Chris Love. Maybe his best throw of the day. He steps into that ball, had plenty of time, steps into it, and throws to the team's second leading receiver, Jack Whitfer. Nice play. Good confidence booster. Troy Blankenship on the field. The punt for the Cyclones. And Troy Blankenship will punt it away for the Cyclones. End of the quarter, and we'll go to break. We'll be back for the start of the second quarter of Iowa State punting to the Boise State Broncos. The top guys knock the cover off it for the Mercedes Championships on ESPN. In all the world, only one university can call itself the birthplace of the computer. Today, it's home to the nation's first six-sided virtual reality theater. It's second in technology innovations, has one of the most wired campuses, as well as one of the three most beautiful. Iowa State University, a source of achievement, innovation, and inspiration, helping people become their best. You have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger, to redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Quite possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 90 health club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure and check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web at bowflexultimate.com today. The new Bowflex for ultimate results. Anytime, Scott. See you. So crowd here in Boise, Idaho, the uh, Bronco Stadium, and the weather is uh, maybe getting a little bit worse. Blankenship back. Boy, this has really been a game in the first quarter where the Cyclones have controlled the field position, and they have done a great job keeping Boise State in their end of the end zone, and with any kind of a decent punt here, Boise State's going to face that same problem, Doc, having to go the length of the field to get any points. And kick almost blocked. They hit the kicker, and the flag will come down. And it looks like uh, if it is roughing, it will be a first down for Iowa State. Well, it's hard to say right now whether it's going to be roughing or whether it's going to be just running into the kicker. 
It was fourth and six, so the roughing would give them the automatic first down in the 15 yards. The running would just be five yards. It would be fourth and one. They're saying it's going to be a five-yard penalty and not, not roughing, so it will not be a first down. I think that's exactly what they're doing. If I were Dan McCartney and Iowa State, I would still punt this ball. If it's going to be fourth and one, I'd still punt it down. I wouldn't risk it. As you can see, our referee there is telling Dan McCartney that it's the five-yard type, not the 15-yard. That's Ken Rivera from the Mountain West Conference, the uh, referee, talking to McCartney. He's arguing his case. He may just decline this. Running into the kicker, defense, that penalty's declined. First down, Boise State. You see, Dan Hawkins does not agree with that. It's kind of a moot point. Take a look where this, where this happens as Blankenship gets the good punt off. Uh, he just kind of rolled underneath his feet there, and that's why it was the five-yard version and not the 15-yard version. How you feel? You feel okay? You got no fever? You feel all right? A little laryngitis. You feel better than you sound? You know, you don't know a good doctor, do you? Uh, I'll tell you what. You feel, you, you, you look great. I feel fine. Just a little bit of laryngitis. And the good news for everyone here is that Seneca Wallace is up now throwing the football on the Iowa State sidelines. The big surprise, Randy, has to be the fact that Boise State, leading a nation in, in total offense and points, cannot move the ball. No, this Iowa State defense has really shut them down. Dinwiddie's only one for seven for seven yards. And Filsey makes the catch up over the 25 and is nailed at about the 27-yard line by Steve Paris, the free safety. Steve Paris is the, is the safety of the two that Iowa State was most concerned about. He's inexperienced. They think he's got a great future. He's just a red shirt freshman, though. Take a look at the end of this play. You can see he comes up, not afraid to get in ball there. Look at all the white jerseys flying around to the ball. Panuki on the reception, and he will have the first down up over the 30-yard line. Ellis Hobbs, the right cornerback, there to make the stop. Well, you can see what Boise State is doing. Whenever they have trouble throwing the ball down the field, the passing game is too big a part of their offense to totally abandon. They're going to their low-risk, high-percentage types of throws, get their backs involved with screens, with flare routes, bring their wide receivers underneath. You can build to a longer throw as the game goes on. I think Dinwiddie is struggling a little bit with his confidence right now because he hasn't had a start like this in many games. Hand it off to Forsey, and he will get up over the 30, 32, and the cup. Play Iowa State got started first play of the game really here. The you see the safety Anthony Forrest come up and just lay a hit. That kind of set the tone for the entire game. Iowa State has made this a physical game, stuff in the run, and the nation's leading scorer of Brock Forsey and Doc. That was early in the game, but it hadn't changed since then. They have kept that intensity on defense throughout. Boise State's only loss this year came at Arkansas. A big physical defensive line. Did not let this offense get untracked, and that's what Iowa State has done so far. Pass intended upfield for Billy Winfield, overthrown, and the flag will come in. Boy, if this is for holding, okay. I don't know that that was a catchable ball at all, and if it's an interference call, there are going to be some arguing going on on the Iowa State side. We'll wait and see what the call is from Ken Rivera. Doing a nice job, though, huddling together. What did everybody see? Let's make sure we agree. And they seem to agree. I don't know, Doc. Uh, I, I don't know that I saw that as interference. Uh, I, I didn't see it either. That if he said it was a push on the uh, defender. Defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Let's take a look here, see if we can pick up what happens. Take a look at the left side of your screen. Seaver's going to be coming across. Then when he throws the ball high, boy, you, you just saw maybe a push. Obviously, in the official view, that ball would have been catchable. And Michael, he's the speedster. David Michael gets the handoff. A junior out of Sacramento was battling back from a knee injury at mid-year. He gains 11. 
He's the backup back, but he is the most explosive runner on the team. 4.45, 40-yard dash time. You said earlier, he's been playing with his brace on this right knee because of the injury. He hates playing with that brace. Wanted to come out today, try and take it off, but he still has some kind of protection down there. 5.8-yard average. When you got that kind of speed, you're going to have that kind of average because you're going to break some long runs. Deepest penetration of the day by the Broncos, and Forsey tries to cut it back. Great backside coverage there by, by Steve Paris, the backup free safety. Forsey brought down by... Let's check it on the sidelines with Heather Cox. Well, Doc, I was just able to talk, actually, with Seneca Wallace. Asked him about how that knee feels, and he said, hey, it hurts, but I'm ready to go back in. They did put a neoprene sleeve on it to try and reduce swelling and get him through the end of this game. But as I promised, he will probably go back in, according to him, on this next series. Back to you, Jerry. Yep. Heather, one of the things, the longer you stand on the sideline in the cold weather, the more tight that knee's going to hurt and, and the tighter it's going to get. If they want to get him in, I think they need to do it quickly. Forsey, great call. The screen pass by Chris Peterson, the Bronco offensive coordinator. And they have the Cyclone Rush dump the pass off. And Forsey will get 18 for the Broncos. Beautifully executed. If you're having trouble running the ball with 4C, throw the high percentage pass. Look at the job he does following and setting up his blockers. Nice job giving the lineman the best angle to throw that block. That's a huge advantage when you get your backs involved in the passing game. Backs are used to running with the ball after they catch it. Receivers, sometimes they feel when they catch the ball, their job's done. Good block up front by Scott Huff, the uh, all-conference center. First and ten for the Broncos, and they will hand it up on the end of the round, and that is Swilly, and he will get inside the 20 to about the 17. Nice drive here by Boise State, opening things up a little bit, running a couple of reverses, a couple of screens and draws to slow down this Iowa State pass rush. Iowa State's done a nice job putting pressure on with just four. Take a look at that rain coming down. More important to take advantage of the passing game when you have open receivers getting the ball to them and catching it. Well, it is really raining down there. The nation's leading offense in terms of scoring. The Broncos thus far scores, averaging over 46 points a game. Hand off to Michael. He will cut it back and be stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Capital One Bowl Week continues with two games today. Bradley Van Pelt and the Mountain West champions, Colorado State Rams battle Conference USA co-champion TCU. Then Casey Clawson leads the Tennessee Volunteers against the Maryland Tur Terrapins in the 35th annual Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl at the Georgia Dome. If you cannot get it on TV, ESPN Radio will have the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Yeah, the Volunteers and the Terrapins in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. It should be a good one down in Atlanta. Here is Dinwiddie, has a receiver and can't get to it. Pass intended for Matt Strophus, the fullback. Dinwiddie had a couple of receivers open there, held the ball a little too long, actually had another receiver that was more open, that would have been an easier throw. He chooses to come off, throws the ball a little bit late, and you can see the slide there by Strophus, get an idea how wet that turf actually is. Nice job laying out for it, but holy cow. That, that's got to be an 8.8, 8.9 slide there. <laughs> Fourth and a yard to the Broncos. This crowd of partisan Bronco fans. 30,000 here, about 27,000 of them are Boise State fans. And 4C will get the first down inside the 15. Nice job of running with your eyes by Brock Forsey. That play designed to go to the left. Iowa State did a nice job at the point of attack. Forsey sees the opening to the right, slides over, picks up the first down. Very nice job of running with your eyes, then tucking the ball, picking up the tough yard. Brock Forsey said his hero in growing up was the one Walter Payton because of Payton's vision. Being able to see the lanes, and that's exactly what Forsey did a moment ago. Saw the lane and cut it back for the first down. Well, you could sure pick a lot worse heroes than Walter Payton. No doubt about that. Forsey again on the pitch. Five-yard, three-yard line, and he is finally brought down on a touchdown-saving tackle by Anthony Forrest. Well, Heather, from where we're 
we're sitting, the weather seems to be getting a little bit worse. The rain continues to get worse and worse, and the field is very wet. Although it is AstroTurf, it's getting soggy. Now, they're using a three-football rotation on each side, so just six balls total. They've got towels, they've got plastic bags, trying to keep the footballs from being too slick, but we've seen a lot of drag passes and a lot of drag balls. It is very, very moist down here, Jerry. Indeed, it's hard to keep the balls dry on a day like today. And these teams will play football, but they run it for the score. Brock Forsey will come in from five yards out, and the Broncos are on the board. Forsey scoring his 30th touchdown this season. Runs behind his best offensive lineman, center Scott Huff, and right guard Rob Byan opened up the hole and just escorted Forsey in. And Nick Kaliakai with the extra point is up and good. So the Broncos on top 7-3 here in the second quarter of Iowa State. This is how they do this. So a five-yard run by Forsey behind some great blocking. Gets the Boise State Broncos the lead for the first time, and they're happy about that. You are a cyber jock. You bid on memorabilia. You're addicted to fantasy football. You outscore your kids in these sports PC games. You need more memory, tough guy. Fantasy freeze up. Don't let your system slow you down. A memory upgrade from Crucial.com can speed up your computer so you can keep up with the pros. You are a cyber jock. Crucial.com. The memory experts. AC on. CD play, disc four. Find nearest Chinese restaurant. The voice-activated navigation system responds to 180 commands. Order a uh, mushu pork. That's not one of them. The all-new 240 horsepower Accord from Honda. Jim! Hey, Mikey. Here's our TV. 57-inch widescreen. Looks even better than last week. Can we take it home this time? Therein lies the problem, Peter. The minute we take it home, I'm going to see it on sale. You know, with Circuit City's Price Match Plus, you don't have to worry about that. Huh. Don't worry. Take it home. And right now at Circuit City, buy any big screen TV and get free delivery. Guaranteed in time for the BCS Championship game. Circuit City, we're with you. It's fun to let the big dog eat. Ah! I like that crowd behind me saying, Trip it and rip it. Heck yeah. Crush it whenever I get the chance. I think it's a great way to start a hole. Put the bang. I don't think it'd be nearly as much fun if you putted first. Charles Howe III joined some of the greatest names in golf at the Mercedes Championships on ESPN. And back at Bronco Stadium, there's a look at Brock Forsey, who rambled in from four yards out. The uh, Boise State scoring drive, 12 plays, 80 yards, and forcing his 30th touchdown of the year. As Tyler Jones will kick it deep, and Lance Young will have it at his own 15. the touchdown again that gave Boise State the lead. Boise State doing a nice job of getting Forsey involved this entire drive. Great blocking on this play. That's a 90-yard drive, and Brock Forsey accounted for 60 of those yards. They got him involved in the passing game, and they got him involved in, in the running game. Now is Iowa State takes the field. Seneca Wallace back at quarterback. I said it was important they get him back involved as early as they can. We'll see what his health is like. Just joined our coverage. Wallace uh, hit on that left ankle and knee after throwing a pass in their first possession. And now the first time back on the field, the pass is a little short, incomplete. Doc, 
I think it will probably affect Seneca Wallace more with his mobility and the running game, but his presence out there, his comfort level that he provides to the rest of the team, the, the boost that he gives them, I think is just huge. The other question is, how is he going to be able to plant on that left leg when he throws the ball? Is he going to be willing to stick it out there knowing it can get hit again, or is he going to tend to throw off of his back foot? If you cannot use that left foot and you're a right-handed passer, what will the passes do? Your balls will go high. You won't be able to follow through. They'll sail on you, especially in this wind and rain. We'll see if he throws the ball high. He throws it perfectly. That time to Lance Young. Got, got an answer. He's okay. That was a heck of a throw. He stepped right into it, threw a ball with a lot of zip, going to one of his favorite receivers. Take a look again. You can see... As he'll take a drop back here, watch how he plants, puts all his weight over onto his left foot, follows through with that right foot. Boy, that, you draw it up. This is how you draw it up. This is a great throw, perfect spot. I think he's okay. And third in the yard, and they give it to the tailback, and he will be stood up right at the mark. He may not have gotten there. Of course, it's like they're going to mark him right at the 35. That's Brian Thompson. Carries for Iowa State. For the Cyclones using a trio of running backs, I think you're right, Doc. I do think he got over the 35, will have the first down using a trio of backs here. Here's the pass that everybody talks about against Iowa and his ability to run September 14th at Iowa. The Cyclones deep in their own territory. Wallace rolled out to his left through an amazing pass against his body. This helped Iowa State defeat their interstate rival, the Iowa Hawkeyes, 36-31. Iowa's only loss of the year. You watch that play. People in Iowa State aren't surprised. They seem to do it all the time. People throughout the country, that's an amazing play. Phenomenal athlete, Seneca Wallace, and this time he hands it off to Brian Thompson. Let's check in back in the studio with Reese Davis. Reese? Doc, at 3.30 Eastern time, we're going to have football on both networks. Capital One Bowl Week rolling on the Axe of Liberty Bowl here on ESPN. Colorado State and TCU, a battle of conference champions. The Silicon Valley over on ESPN2, Georgia Tech and Fresno State. Doc, I don't have a lozenge for you, partner. <laughs> Uh, Reese, I know you went through the same thing a couple of weeks ago with uh, little laryngitis in the studio. And I make it all year without a problem. And the uh, final day of the season for us, as far as bowl games are concerned, I get a little bit of scratchy throat. Second down, and they hand it off inside on the draw to Thompson, and he will get maybe a half a yard. We talked about the pass and the play that Seneca Wallace made against Iowa. Kirk Ferns, the Iowa head coach, you think he was a little impressed with Seneca Wallace? Most mortals couldn't even make that throw, but he put the ball right on the money. I can't imagine there are many greater than him, and I know Kirk Ferns is going to be happy to see him graduate. Florida State head coach Bobby Bowden, after they played him in the opening, the uh, NBA Robinson Classic said that Seneca Wallace is a cross between Charlie Ward and Michael Vick. Pretty high regards there. Scrambling around, back to pass. Will tuck his three. dangerous, 35-40, and is nailed out of bounds at about the 42-yard line by Andy Avalos. And the flag comes in for the late hit, Seneca. Now, this is a little tough because Seneca is capable of cutting back, making big plays. If he's not clearly out of bounds, you put a lot of pressure on that defense. Do we hit him? Do we not? This time, you see the flag was thrown by both officials. This will tack another 15 yards on. And this is what makes Seneca so good. His legs in the passing game. Head ball, personal foul, late hit, unnecessary roughness, defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Take a look at the replay here. We'll see the lower left side of the screen. See if we had a holding call going on. How about a tackle and a takedown? Wallace going the other way. We'll see where the hit takes. Yeah, clearly going out of bounds. Avalos comes over, throws the hit throws gets the flag thrown on him and will give iowa state excellent field position and a first down but again i think that leg's okay doc we've seen him throw a great ball we've seen him move around and he shows great quickness on that one i think he's okay cyclones on the move once again they're only scoring a field goal on the opening possession in the first quarter wallace will pitch it back to danielson he looks to throw that keeps it in runs will be inside the 40, down to about the 39. See Danielson and Iowa State getting their wide receivers involved in the running game as well. Boy, what a story Lane Danielson is. A walk-on, 
has had a wonderful career, only a junior. He's got the biggest play potential. He bench presses over 400 pounds. He's a roommate with the other walk-on wide receiver, Jack Whitford. Two walk-ons, they kind of stick together, and boy, they lead this team first and second in receiving. Second and five. We'll see if somebody from Iowa State jumped. Now, Boise State had some movement going on. I don't know if they came across the line, but the Iowa State players are indicating that they did. Bottom and Chauncey Alco uh, right, stepped across. Out Offside, defense. Five yard turn, a first down. Take a look as you see Dan Hawk is not very happy. See, we can see where the violation occurs. Oh, boy, the center looks like he rocks back and moves. Usually, if it's offside against the defense, Doc, they don't stop the play. They let that keep going, and the offense has the choice. But that time, Zach Butler does a nice job of fooling them. <laughs> Dan Hawkins has seen his team help Iowa State on this drive. A penalty for the first down right there, and the penalty personal foul hitting Wallace late out of bounds. Again, Wallace on the option, will keep it, tuck it up, he's on the 30, runs out of bounds at about the 27. If you had any question as to whether Wallace was healthy, Dan McCarney would not run him on the option if he were trying to protect his legs. We talked about Lane Danielson and some of the things that he brings to this team. Take a look at him blocking in the running game. If you're going to have success running to the outside, you've got to have wide receivers that are willing and capable of blocking downfield. It's one of the hardest things to do. Make contact and keep contact downfield. You know, Lane has been troubled. He lost his mom last May in an auto accident. He wears a special necklace uh, around his neck and his grandparents gave him the day before his mom was buried at a funeral. With a cross, he will not go anywhere with that necklace. So an inspirational young man who tries to suck it up and uh, and play on with his grandparents with that tragic loss of his mom last May. Just a short attempt to Jamal Montgomery, but the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. And one thing when you only drop back three steps, you don't allow the pass rush to get very far upfield. You've got to throw in between the arms. Can't throw over them because they're too close to you. That time a nice job by the Boise State defensive line getting their arms up, knocking that ball down. Boy, this is where Wallace becomes so dangerous. Third and three, he gives you so many options. Seneca Wallace, two of five for 21 yards, throwing the football. Again, the option, and he will pitch it this time to Brian Thompson. He will scamper down inside the 20. So Thompson gets the first down. Sometimes you just guess right. Great job by Wallace getting the ball to the perimeter. Boise State coming with pressure up the middle. Wallace runs away from it. Watch him hold the ball to the last minute. Last minute, now when you hold that ball, you keep Berger, the outside linebacker, from being able to play both the quarterback and the pitch back. Good job by Wallace forcing Berger to make that decision before he pitched it. At the Bronco 19. Seneca Wallace, second team all Big 12 this year, team co-captain. A finalist for the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award. Also an early season Heisman Trophy candidate. Back to throw, looks near side and has a receiver. That is Lance Young, the speedster. And he uh, may have gotten a yard at most. One of the things Seneca Wallace has done, Doc, is seven straight years, Iowa State has had a thousand yard rusher. They will not this year, mostly because of that guy Seneca Wallace. Now since they've struggled running, they try and throw these kinds of passing plays. Ball control, security, take a look real time and listen to these hits. Nice tackle there by Gabe Franklin, coming up and holding him up until the pursuit can catch up. 12th play the drive, and good defense there by the Broncos again. That's Bobby the Hammer, they call him, the defensive end for Boise State. 
tackle. Really the best defensive lineman that Boise State has. He's the strongest. He was a tackle playing inside. He's been more effective now coming to the outside. You see 270, 269 pounds. Little too light to hold up inside there. They get him to the outside where he plays. He can use his quickness. That's been a good move. He hand cleans 400 pounds. Bench presses 445. As you said, strongest player on the Boise State team. Got to protect the ball here. Seneca Walsh throwing 18 interceptions this year. Protect the ball. Don't take any points off the board. Seneca looking down inside the 10, and they will say he caught the football. Great catch by Jack Whitford, the possession receiver. That'll be about the nine-yard line. Should be enough for a first down. Great catch, great throw. Throw the ball over the middle, keep it down. You don't spread your receiver out, and you keep the ball from being tipped up in the air. Whitmer, as you said, Doc, possession receiver, good concentration, goes down, catches that ball. That was a great job. Key play to third and eight. You had to pick up that first down. You keep this drive going. Now you can possibly get it in the end zone. Cyclone threatening again here. First and goal. On the scrimmage there. Eight-yard line for Boise State. Annika Wallace back in the football game after leaving in the first quarter for a knee or ankle problem on the left side. Inside handoff to Wagner. Let's check in back in the studio with Reese Davis. Reese? And Doc, don't forget tomorrow morning, New Year's morning, the Capital One Bowl week continues with the Outback Bowl. The SEC and the Big Ten. Big Ten won the first matchup between these two, Minnesota over Arkansas. Trent. Redemption for Michigan. Last year they got blown out by an SEC team. Hey, Rex Grossman should redeem himself in this game. That's tomorrow morning, guys. And lots more coming your way. Capital One Bowl week. Glad to have you with us here in Boise, Idaho. I'm Jerry Parch. A squeaky Jerry Parch. I apologize for Larry Giles, Randy Ryder Analyst, and Heather Cox, a Boise native, and on the sidelines. Seneca fakes a handoff, rolls, looks for a receiver, looking for the tight end who's covered the end zone, and he will dance out at about the six. Well defensed by Boise State. They didn't get suckered into the fake handoff. They had two men over there to keep an eye on Wallace. Sometimes two isn't good enough. This time they had pretty good possession there. You see uh, Quentin Michael, the safety. He's got good coverage. You see a couple other jerseys over there. Really no place for Wallace to go and wisely gets the ball out of bounds. If you take a look at Ron Collins there, the defensive coordinator for Boise State. He knew he was going to have his work cut out for him today. First half. Iowa State trying to retake the lead. And touchdown, Cyclones. Great throw, great catch. Jamal Montgomery, only six foot, gets good position, uses that size, gets good position. Wallace held on to the ball and just threw a perfect strike. You, your better players have got to make big plays at big times. That's a third goal. They need the touchdown. Wallace puts the ball right on the money. And Adam Benneke will try to make the uh, margin a three-point lead with the extra point. Benneke, first-team All-Big 12 kicker. And the kick is up and good. And the kick is good. Two minutes, 29 seconds. Take a look at Seneca Wallace, get the ball to Montgomery, throws the perfect pass, put the Cyclones back in the lead, and you can see the reaction afterwards. They're happy to have him on the field. Lesson one. Stillvoll. Stylish. Kraftvoll. Powerful. Was für ein Auto ist das? What kind of car is this? Introducing the all-new 240 horsepower Accord from Honda. Wie haben sie das geschafft? How did they do it? Why are guys so hot to see Drumline? Get the picture? Drumline, rated PG-13. Now playing only in theaters. This thing you carry with you everywhere. This thing you obsess about and face ridicule for. This thing you're not sure that you'll ever be able to quit. May 
have just met its match. Introducing the new Commit Lozenge, an FDA-approved medicine that has the power to help fight your addiction. Its medicine keeps working even after the lozenge is gone. You use less and less until you use none. Imagine if this thing were just a thing. The new Commit Lozenge. Real power. Real help. Ugly brush piles messing up your property? Call 1-800-614-3939 for your free catalog on the professional power DR Chipper. Turn those brush piles into valuable mulch. Call 1-800-614-3939 today. It's the most wonderful it's a New Year's Eve bash. Casey Clawson and the Vols battled Butkus Award winner E.J. Henderson and the Turfs. Capital One Bowl Week continues with the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl tonight at 7.30 on ESPN. He thought fighting I gotta take karate. was the only way to win. But what he really needed was a friend. He's the best friend I ever had. Real Classics, the movie and an inside look at the Karate Kid. 9 Eastern Sunday on ESPN Classic. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Brought to you by Honda. It's more accord than ever. Take a look at the beautiful Mesa Falls and the surroundings here in Boise, Idaho. Take a look at the scoring drive. 16 plays, 75 yards. And I think Seneca obviously means a lot to this team. He made a couple of big plays, but what he did to lift their spirits when he came on there, he makes the people around him better. And Benicky will kick it away uh, deep to Brock Forsey on his own five. Forsey cuts it back, has a seam over the 25, and that's where Boise State will start on offense. Stayed up by three, 10 7, with 2.19 to play here in the first half. Back in just a moment. <clears throat> Homer. Yes. Nice. Yes. Nice. yes. Uh, it only bounced twice. No, no, I cured it. So what? Okay. It's a home run. No, yeah, it's a it double. No, it didn't even hit the back of the shell. It bounces it's twice, it's a double. What are you talking about? I'm Get talking about rules. Doesn't hit Those the aren't the rules. You're talking about making up the rules. No, okay? I'm talking I'm about, look, I play with shoes, you don't. So That's what? That's a rule. I have a medical condition. This is why no one wants to play with you. Why? Because I'm right and I'm, I'm better at it Take a nap. Hello, hello, hello. What's with the reverb thing in car ads? Reverb, reverb. Yeah. At Volkswagen, we just offer all 2003 models with over 50 standard features, great resale values, and a promise to work with you until you're behind the wheel of a German-engineered car. But we can do the whole reverb thing, too, I guess. Echo, echo, echo. Through January 2nd, buy or lease any new Volkswagen model and receive $500 in Volkswagen accessories at no extra charge. in Boise, the nation's most prolific offense, Boise State, held his seven points thus far here in the first half. Final 219 to go. This crucial.com humanitarian ball until halftime. And Swilly upended there. By Steve Paris, the backup free safety. Boy, I, I gotta tell you, Doc, I've seen Anthony Forrest and Steve Paris, the two backup safeties play a strong first half here take a look at this hit they're in the right position they come over and iowa state has been able to maintain the intensity that they started the game with for the entire half then when he finds a receiver that's wingfield up near midfield take a look at what's coming up at the half the fiesta bowl news liberty bowl preview and the bowl recap a lot of things going on today. Just a, a preview for today, tomorrow, and, and the big game's coming up. And Reese, Trev, and Mark at halftime updating what's happening on Capital One Bowl Week. Forsey gets the handoff and steps out of a tackle 
That was Jeremy Loy, the strong side linebacker who was going to bring him down for about a two-yard loss. And Boise fights his way back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, nice hit by Jeremy Lloyd. Now, Boise State calling timeout. Did wind up losing a couple yards. Boise State wants to take time to talk it over. They need some points here. You are a cyberjack. You bid on memorabilia. You're addicted to fantasy football. You outscore your kids in any sports PC game. You need more memory, tough guy. Fantasy freeze up. Don't let your system slow you down. A memory upgrade from Crucial.com can speed up your computer so you can keep up with the pros. You are a cyberjack. Crucial.com. The memory experts. Catch the competition by surprise. Will it become the car by which all others are judged? Will lightning strike again? The all-new Accord from Honda. For families that talk a lot, Singular's got a deal for you. When you sign up for Family Talk on plans starting at just $29.99, you can add up to three lines for just $19.99 each and share your minutes. Plus, we'll give you up to four free phones. If your family really talks a lot, get more Family Talk on plans starting at just $39.99. You still get the extra lines and free phones. Plus, you can share 1,000 anytime minutes that can roll over. Family Talk from Singular Wireless. Casey Clawson and the Balls battle E.J. Henderson and the Turks. Capital One Bowl Week continues with the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl tonight at 7.30 on ESPN. Back in Boise where Iowa State holds a 10-7 lead. Boise State with the ball trying to work their two-minute offense. And Moody back to pass and bounces off the intended receiver. That is David Michael. And Jason Turner there to make the recovery. Final minute to the first half here in Boise. Iowa State up by three. There is a start. There is a finish. And in the journey between, there are dreams. The NCAA Hall of Champions keeps these dreams alive for you. More than a museum, the NCAA Hall of Champions takes you on an interactive journey. Relive some of the most inspirational moments in collegiate sports history and walk in the steps of the student athlete. At the NCAA Hall of Champions, you'll find something for every fan. Discover what it means to be a champion. The journey begins inside. In all the world, only one university can call itself the... At, at Volkswagen, we want you to remember that buying a car is a long-term commitment. Yeah, everything sounds perfect in the beginning, but you want to be sure. You want to know, does it come with over 50 standard features and one of the highest resale values in the market today? And we'll love you for years to come. Yeah. So see your local dealer soon. They'll work with you to get you into a 2003 Volkswagen. Dude, you are freaking me out. Through January 2nd, buy or lease any new Volkswagen model and receive $500 in Volkswagen accessories at no extra charge. Spectacular horizon to horizon views. 27 holes of world-class golf. Endless fun, enduring value. Torion. See why so many families have made this vibrant community in Arizona's White Mountains a part of their life. Call toll-free or visit our website at torion.com. Over a minute, so you got to be careful with the ball. Leading a nation in total offense and points, but struggling here in the first half. The Broncos of Boise State. Dinwiddie has a receiver and incomplete. Intended for Billy Wingfield. Ellis Hobbs, great coverage there by the corner. Boy, pretty good throw that time by Dinwiddie. Got the ball to Wingfield, but just excellent coverage by Hobbs, as you said. Buys a little time, throws the ball low, right into him, and just excellent coverage. Hobbs doesn't give Wingfield any opportunity to catch that ball. Jesse Warner in the kick for in the punt for Boise State. 
Todd Miller back on his own 10. Make it about the 15. And the low wobbler will hit at about the 27 and roll down to the 26. When you have the leading scorer in the nation, you've got to get him involved any way you can. Here he opens up the kickoff return, brings it back out to close to midfield. They get him involved in the passing game for a big play on the screen. And then, of course, they give him the ball down on the goal line, and he does what he's done 30 times this year. That's the reason Boise State's on the board, though they're trailing 10-7. Big story, Wallace, 70 total yards. He missed a good quarter, a little bit over that, but appears to be back in the game and healthy now as Iowa State tries to run their two-minute offense. And the draw inside to Wagner, Michael Wagner, the junior out of West Covina, California. you got to like Seneca Wallace at the controls in a two-minute. Very level-headed, doesn't panic, keeps his emotions on an even kill. He's got some good weapons on the outside to get involved here. seconds of the first half. Wallace throws the pass again to Wagner, and he is shot out of bounds. Gaining about a yard. Still going to be shy of the first half. Trying to get into field goal range first. Now the long for Beneke and Yelk is only 48. Beneke has kicked a 48-yarder this year. Yelk, their other kicker, has only kicked a 45-yarder. So they need to get down close to the 30-yard line to feel comfortable with it. Third and four, Iowa State's been outstanding so far this game. Seven for 11, that has kept the Boise State offense off of the field, which is why they've only got seven points. They haven't had a lot of opportunities. Wallace lost it upfield, it's tipped, and it will fall incomplete. Pass intended for Jack Whitber. Julius Brown on the coverage. Good coverage that time, as you said, by Julius Brown. Whitford was not looking for the ball, wasn't expecting it. They had some press coverage, forced the Iowa State receivers to adjust their route, go up the field. That's a much lower percentage throw. Nice stand here by this Boise State defense. Good job. Final 28 seconds here in the first half. The Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl in beautiful Boise, Idaho. Iowa State, a 12-point underdog coming into this game, up by three here in the first half. And the pawn is away as the flag comes down again, and Gilligan will take the uh, punt. But it'll probably come back as the punter. There was some contact back on Blankenship. This is going to be running into the kicker again, but with it being fourth and four, it will give them the first down, so we'll see Seneca Wallace and the Cyclone offense come back on the field. Running into the kicker, defense, five-yard penalty, the yardage results in the first down. Take a look again, Boise State playing aggressive, trying to come after the punt. Looks like Benneke just, excuse me, Blankenship just steps on top of him. And they were up there throwing the flag. Well, I, don't, I don't know that that contact was initiated at all. I don't know if I agree uh, with that. Take a look at Seneca Wallace coming back after the injury. Was he healthy? Was he not? Moving well in the pocket. Scrambles out. See, he seems to be okay. And then, of course, throwing the ball right on target. A couple of short passes right there. Huge for Iowa State having him back in this game. Final 15 seconds. Seneca back to pass. He's being chased. Looking upfield and almost has it picked off. Lane Danielson was the intended receiver, but it was nearly picked off by Travis Berger, the strong side linebacker. Well, one of the things that Seneca Wallace is prone to do is force the ball in situations that are too tight. No reason to take a chance right here. Just throw the ball out of bounds. Earlier, we talked about his interceptions, 12 in the last six games. John Siaco on the pressure from the middle linebacker spot. And that's going to be a key here in the second half is Boise State getting some pressure. They wanted to contain Seneca Wallace, but were afraid to really come after him because he's so good tucking it and scrambling with the football. I'm sure folks who watch the Big 12 year round will know that he can get it done when he is forced out of the pocket. Final seconds of the first half. Pass is out of bounds. Incomplete for Lance Young. Pass. Third down. Dan 
McCartney told us yesterday that he wanted to keep this game close, not only because that's your best chance to win, but Boise State, 8-0 in the WAC, average margin of victory, 37 points. If he can keep this game close through halftime into the third quarter, he thinks Boise State won't react very well. He's, it's worked exactly like he has it scripted to. Final two seconds here in the first half. Walls will take it himself. And that will be the final play of the first half here. A big half for Iowa State Cyclones coming in as a 12-point underdog. They have dominated both sides of the ball in line of scrimmage and lead by three here at halftime. Let's check in on the sidelines with Heather, who's caught up with the Iowa State coach. Coach, how does Seneca's injury influence the way you guys play this second half? Well, you know, we got to make sure he's okay, first of all. We're not going to put him on the field unless he can be effective. And he came back and did some good things. He hyperextended his knee a little bit, but I think he's going to be okay. We just got to continue to play real good defense. This is the number one scoring offense in the country. And improve in the second half, we'll have a chance to win a game. How is this team affected, especially in the secondary, with the loss of the four ineligible players, Coach? Well, I think our kids are handling good. We don't flinch. Uh, we move on. That's why we have 85 on scholarship let's get ready to go good luck in the thank second half all right th thank you heather and our college game day studio coming up next reese davis trev alberts mark may we are at halftime here in boise with <laughs> iowa state up by three reese doc we are accustomed to seeing snow in boise this time of year maybe some wet rain a little bit of sleet perhaps glad to have you with us on the college game day halftime report trev alberts mark mayer here and guys really uh boise state's been held about 40 points below its season average still a half of football to go do you attribute most of that to the weather or to the iowa state defense mark well i think both of those things and also this team's been off for a while a lot of times offensively if you've had time off like going into training camp defense usually starts off a little ahead of offense the first couple of days and the same thing in the bowl season if you had a month off your kind of timing is lost you're out of sync a little bit if you're trying to run some pass patterns you just don't hit that receiver in stride if you've had a month or two off and I think that's the problem with Boise State at this point I agree with you. I think it's both I think Iowa State's defense deserves an awful lot of credit I think they're flying around and playing good coverage or coming up and stopping the run I think Seneca Wallace when you saw him come back in the game you could see everybody around you could just tell he's the leader of that mm -hmm. football team everybody else rises up when the leaders on the field they play much better with Seneca his final game 72 yards of offense in the first half in a second half to go. He has a three-point lead at the break. Coming up from College Game Day Halftime Report, we'll take you out to the desert. Number one team in the land trying to extend that winning streak and claim another national championship. Media Day for Miami. Big Monday, presented by Bud Light, returns January 6th on ESPN. Still doing those bills, hunt? <laughs> Just resting with a credit card balance. <laughs> You've been feeding on those high interest rates. I just switched our balance over to a Capital One No Hassle card. Oh. We're going to save 500 bucks a year. 500 bucks? Switch your high interest balance to the Capital One No Hassle card for the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates. You could save up to $500 a year. What's in your wallet? Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting instructional video. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same techniques that produced his back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. Collegiate Baseball Magazine's editor calls it a masterpiece, the best drill video ever produced. This video is endorsed by top professionals like superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. The Defensive Drills video benefits players of all ages and ability levels and makes a great gift too, so call now. Have you ever wanted to develop your artistic abilities? If so, you may already have the interest and desire needed to become a serious art student. To find out, simply call toll-free, and Art Instruction Schools will send you this enjoyable art test. Since 1914, we've helped thousands of aspiring artists become more skilled, more confident, and more creative in their art. Call today for your free art test. We'll help you become a better artist. Call 1-800-633-3400. Time in Boise in the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl, Iowa State out of the Big 12 on top of the WAC champions, Boise State by a count of 10 to 7. Glad to have you with us on College Game Day Halftime Report. Trev and Mark will be back in just a moment. It is championship game week. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl comes up on Friday night. Miami and Ohio State. Miami's been down this road before, entering a national championship game. Heavily favored, but... No battle fatigues, not much trash talk going on in Miami's media day out in the desert. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet are out there covering the game for us. Guys? 
Now the saguaro cactus is standing guard over Sun Devil Stadium. Just a beautiful day for media day. Miami, the first team to take the field here. It's a Miami team that could not appear to be more relaxed. They've been through this before. It's their second national championship game, their third big BCS bowl game. But it's a team that is always very calm, businesslike, professional. Sometimes it's puzzling to its coaches, and it's certainly puzzling to some media folks who expect the Canes to be foaming at the mouth at this point. We want to be relaxed, uh, and I was asked, we're getting on the bus to, to make the trip out here a week ago or whenever, and I said, boy, your guys don't seem really fired up. My like, gosh, we're, you know, we're out of bed at 7 in the morning, and, uh, and kickoff's over a week away. I, I hope we're not really fired up at that time, but uh, I, I want us to be confident. I want us to be well prepared and, uh, and, the thing, uh, and, and play hard. Well, I think it's going to be much tougher this year. Uh, you know, a lot of people counted us out and didn't think we'll be here again. And we proved a lot of people wrong because, you know, we were just determined to be here again. You hear things about, um, you know, them trying to put the game in my hands and, and stuff like that because they don't respect me. But, you know, that's that's uh, that's everybody's opinion. And, and that's something that I can't control. The only thing I can control is, is whether or not I, I go out and, and how well I play and, um, you know, having fun out on the field. This day is always interesting. Andre Johnson, they're one of the greatest players yeah. in this game and in the country. Like two guys talking yeah. to him and yeah. huge crowds around guys like Romberg and Dorsey. Boy, that's an excellent point. You know, if I was, I'll tell you what, Ohio State, I think, has the advantage after day one of the media day. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> they will be shocked. They will be shocked when they get here because they'll see five stars sitting in a pedestal with Hordes of people around interviewing them, and all the good players, linemen and everything, are all sitting out there doing nothing. I'm telling you, if I was a coach, I'd make sure. First time I got my team, I'd say, look, when you guys get here, I'd be surprised if nobody talks to you. Yeah, right. You're going to talk to everybody else. Well, but I think, as Chris said, Miami's been through this, and yeah. it really helps him deal with this, and, and I think the expectations. One thing that we know, it was reiterated again, you just heard Ken Dorsey, they're not happy. They're not foaming at the mouth at this point, but fans, don't worry about Miami when it comes to the kickoff. They're going to be ready by the time this game kicks off Friday night. They're upset. They're, they're kind of building themselves up, thinking nobody respects us, the individual awards. They put the game in my hands. We'll see. Miami will be ready by the time they play this game. So will the Buckeyes, though. Hell yeah. Well, I think for Ohio State, I think you're right. This is a little bit of a shock to the oh, system. It's not yeah. the Outback Bowl. No, no, no. no this is, is, the, national this is the media horde is something that's kind of been a jolt for a team that it, very buttoned down, very tight acting at this point. Yes, sir. Let's go back to the studio. All right, Chris, thank you very much. And speaking of people who are upset, Maurice Claret is a bit upset. Claret lost a longtime friend of his family to a gunshot wound, a slain, back in his hometown of Youngstown. He'd hoped to be able to travel back to Youngstown in order to attend the funeral, but because of uh, miscommunication, if you will, or some situations with NCAA rules, they were unable to front Claret the money so that he could fly back to the hometown. There is an NCAA provision which would allow reimbursement of such travel expenses, but it did not happen in Claret was upset saying that it appeared in some people's eyes that football was more important than a life. So we'll see if that has any impact on the game whatsoever. We have more coming up on Capital One Bowl Week on New Year's morning. Florida against Michigan, SEC against the Big Ten, 11 a.m. Eastern time. And guys, as you look at this game, there's a little bit of a Bowl Week rivalry that goes on between the SEC and the Big Ten. They have three meetings this year. The Big Ten has already won one of those. So uh, your feelings on this game right now in Michigan and Florida? Well, I think Florida going to win this game, and this is the reason why. Rex Grossman had a very turbulent season this year, an up-and-down season, thrown for 14 fewer touchdown passes and five more interceptions than last year under the Steve Spurrier regime. And it's been very frustrating for him because he hadn't been able to get the job done. The electrifying offense under Steve Spurrier just hasn't happened this year, but here he throws a pass down the field to Taylor Jacobs, sets in the pocket, zing down the field, he scores a touchdown here, and I think what's key for this offense, and Rex Grossman is to put points on the board. One, he needs to get healthy for this football game, and I think he will. I think he wants to finish the season with a good taste in his mouth. They lost four football games this season. That's unflorida like and unrex Grossman like, so I'm pretty sure that he wants to finish on a high note. I like Florida in this game. I like running the ball with Ernest Graham, but I like Rex Grossman healthy in this offense, putting points on the board against Michigan. The video we saw there of Rex Grossman was him standing there without anybody getting pressure on him, and I think that's the whole key in the game, and the reason why I like Michigan to win this game is because of their defense. Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator, does a great job of getting pressure. 38 sacks so far this year, 15 interceptions. I think that's the bottom line. The other one is this. They really want to win this game. Remember last year, Michigan played Tennessee. Tennessee destroyed Michigan. Michigan wants to prove that they're a good football team and that they can beat an SEC football team.
Both of these programs aspire to the national championship game, but if you can't make it there, it's nice to be able to face another powerhouse. These two teams yes. have never met before. Michigan, a longtime power forward, a sort of a nouveau power since 1990 when the old ball coach arrived in Gainesville. Florida and Michigan in the Outback Bowl tomorrow morning. It ought to be a great matchup here on ESPN. We've got a good one going in Boise right now. Iowa State by three. Vote now on the Pontiac High Performance Play of the Year. This for the win for Florida State to upset Miami from 43 yards away. He missed it! Wide left! Here's Wallace pumping, looking, running to his right, looking, and he's going to be almost caught. Now he's running at the 25 and runs down the sideline, back to the 10. Now he's giving Brown, goes around to the 10, to the left side, to the 5, touchdown! Crystal's going to throw for it, got to get it off. They go for the ball game. Touchdown, touchdown, Michael Jenkins on fourth and one. Final play of the game, Randall stops, throws it as far as he can. Johnson closing in on the magical number. Gets the toss. Johnson, here he goes! This is 2,000 plus for Larry Johnson! Touchdown, Penn State! And he does it with style! To vote, log on to ESPN.com. Keyword Pontiac. The conference season is back. Look at the dish! And look at the shred! With the return of Big Monday as Big East Powers Notre Dame and Pittsburgh square off. Followed by Big 12 favorite Kansas against Iowa State. Then, Super Tuesday debuts with Oklahoma taking on Connecticut. And SEC heavyweight Florida against up-and-coming Mississippi State. Big Monday presented by Bud Light January 6th. Super Tuesday presented by Dollar Rent-A-Car January 7th on ESPN and ESPN2. Back on the College Game Day Halftime Report. Halfway through the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl, Iowa State on top of Boise State by a count of 10 to 7. Just the first of five bowl games on the family of networks today. And we're coming up 3.30 Eastern time with the Axel Liberty Bowl here on ESPN. Matchup of conference champions, Colorado State coming out of the Mountain West. TCU from Conference USA. Jeff Hollinger and Todd Christensen are in Memphis. Is one of the country's most unique, eccentric, and fascinating places to visit. It's a little Elvis, a little Al Green, a little BB King, and a lot of great food. If you love barbecue, Memphis is hog heaven. Hello, everyone. It's the 44th annual Axel Liberty Bowl. Colorado State taking on TCU. And for the Rams, if you talk about them offensively, you're talking about Cecil Sapp and their fine quarterback, Bradley Van Pelt. He has become a complete player this year. Everybody was aware of the fact that he could really run the ball effectively. And he did that this year with 825 yards, averaging over 6 yards per carry. But it is in the passing game where he continued to improve. He threw for over 2,000 yards this year and as a result became a complete quarterback. And with the linebacker mentality courtesy of his father, he is the leader of this football team. For TCU, one of the great stories in college football, a power in the 1930s and 40s. They were dormant for decades. And then Gary Patterson has helped lead them to really some terrific times in Fort Worth, along with Lon Tay Hobbs, the USA Freshman of the Year, and they are a nine-win team. LaMarcus McDonald, a fine defensive backer. Dominant defender, 113 tackles, 28 tackles for loss, and 10 sacks, but just as significant is the fact that he is a disruptor. This is the kind of player the defensive coordinators covet because of his ability to change what an offense wants to do. Memphis and the Mississippi River, the wet weather here may put a lot more focus on the running game. Wet weather seems to be a theme already. You know, Mark, Colorado State might enter this game a little bit of a bad taste in its mouth. The Rams really wanted to finish the Mountain West season with a perfect conference record lost in the finale to UNLV. Well, they could turn it around in this game, and everybody talks about the Cecil Saps and Bradley Van Pelt, but Matt Bartz, the tight end, he's tied for the lead in touchdown receptions with four. 
He has eight receptions on the season. So in the red area, look for the tight end, Matt Barr, till he'll score some touchdowns in this game. We've talked a lot about freshman players in the nation, and TCU is another team that has a good freshman player. How about Lonta Hobbs at running back? Got about 1,000 yards rushing, and I think it's a real key in the game. You take a look at him here. Very nice running back. A lot of people don't know about him, but you see him. He does have some speed to get outside, but he also has the strength in the middle of the field. 952 yards rushing, 12 touchdowns. I think the key is against Colorado State's defense. Larry Kerr, the defensive coordinator, down the stretch. The last four games, they've allowed an average of 265 yards. What's wrong with Mark May? 265. I think that Lonta Hobbs will do a good job of running the ball. You know who's had a good sophomore season? Gary Patterson, second-year yes, coach after taking over for Dennis Very Franchoni good. at TCU. He's done an excellent job. He's got his team in the Axel Liberty Bowl this afternoon. We're going to run you back through Capital One Bowl Week. Going to find out what Trev and Mark are giggling about, maybe. A little bowl recap. Cliff Kingsbury got it off to a big start. It's Power Illustrated. It's Pressure Illustrated. It's Passion Illustrated. And where is it illustrated? Not here. Bob, they won because they... Not here. Not here. It's only in Sports Illustrated. You can't get this insight anywhere but an SI. And now get 12 free trial issues of SI. That's right, 12 free trial issues. Plus, continue to get SI at over 50% off the cover price. Call now and also get this one-of-a-kind fleece pullover absolutely free. But don't look for this free offer here, or here, or here. No one will call. It's only if you call. Use your credit card to reserve 12 free trial issues of SI. If SI isn't for you, cancel and keep the 12 issues free. But you'll want to continue to get SI at over 50% savings and the free police pullover. You can't get this offer anywhere else. It's nowhere but here. Only in Sports Illustrated. Call now. This is Boise State University, shaped by its location in one of America's most dynamic small cities, located in the midst of an unsurpassed natural environment. Boise State is a place where students connect to the world around them, from high technology to high culture, where student opportunities abound in an extensive internship program, where students use the great western outdoors as their classroom and as their playground. Boise State University, real education for the real world. Do you have good credit? Mm-hmm. Or do you only think you have? Hmm. Do you know how to check your credit report and find out? Uh-uh. A surprise on your credit report could mean you'd be turned down for a mortgage. Yeah. A car loan. <laughs> even a credit card. <laughs> which is why you should log on to freecreditreport.com. FreeCreditReport.com will show you how to find out online what's mm -hmm. in your credit report, who's been checking it, and whether everything's accurate. Oh. So log on to FreeCreditReport.com today. You're going to do it now, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Great. Now, how about you? Hmm? You know, we try to capture the big picture themes for the college football season and for Capital One Bowl Week. And so far, I believe I've put my finger on going out in style and punt returns so yeah. far in the postseason thus far. Let's take you all the way back through and show you some of the highlights, some of the flavor, as the kids like to see. Monster Tangerine Bowl, Cliff Kingsbury going out in style against Clemson. 55-15, Texas Tech won it. Kingsbury in the high 300s. Sega Las Vegas Bowl, punt returns. Somebody mentioned punt return? Craig Bragg against New Mexico. 74 yards. The Bruins perhaps showing off for Carl Durrell, the new coach. They beat the Lobos 27-13 despite an anemic offensive performance. Con Agrippoon's Hawaii Bowl. Yes, Mark, I did. Linares Elpage. Punt return, Linares Elpage. Great job of towing the sidelines, following this blocker. Cuts it in for the score. Right there, 60 yards for the touchdown. A WAC team losing a bowl game on its home field. We're in halftime of a situation like that as well. Motor City Bowl. Boston College Toledo. Brian St. Pierre going out in style. Hooks up with Grant Adams for the second time. That a 40-yarder. 51-25. St. Pierre over 300. Inside Bowl, Rod Rutherford to Larry Fitzgerald, Pitt over Oregon State. Once again, a phenomenal catch over the shoulder. Touchdown, Pitt rolled over Oregon State, 38-13. to 13. 
I smell a bullet in the cough in his future. <laughs> Houston Bowl. Josh Fields of Oklahoma State against Southern Mississippi. Rashawn Woods, maybe two, depending on what he decides to do. Oklahoma State, 33-23. Woods, nine catches, a buck 64 in the post. Mark's six. got this one. Mainstay Independence Bowl. <laughs> Hotty toddy, gosh almighty, who the heck are they? Hey, flim, flam, bim, bam, Ole Miss beat Nebraska. <laughs> Holiday Bowl. L. Roberson hits Derek Evans over the middle. Ten-yard touchdown. Kansas State on top of Arizona State. Arizona State nearly a three-touchdown underdog in this game. Andrew Walter tried to save them. The Sun Devils fought valiantly. By the way, news breaking. Terrell Suggs is going to skip that senior season and go pro. The fine defensive end for the Sun Devils. K-State won this game 34-27. Continental Tire Bowl. Matt Shaw trickeration with Marcus Higgins and Wally Lundy. you got to know that that Mark and Haggis, you know, he used to play a little quarterback. Mm -hmm. He might throw it. He did. Wally Lundy touchdown. 48-22 Virginia. What? Haggins also took a punt back for a touchdown. How about the Alamo Bowl presented by MasterCard? Fourth and ten. Brooks Bollinger. Darren Charles. Mm. First down. Bollinger then tied it at 28. And he kept it himself and snuck it in there. Colorado missed the field goal. And then Mark Mike Allen for the ball game. That whole good. He's a regular, he's a regular Mark Mosley. That was a shocking game for me. I was really shocked. 28. Wisconsin, the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. Dan Nystrom. Oh, I'm all over these kids. Oh, it's Dan Nystrom. You must be sound in the kicking game. Dan Nystrom, five field goals to lead the Gophers over the Hogs, 29 to 14. And in the Seattle Bowl, James McPherson against a very young, but we have to say porous Oregon pass defense. McPherson over the top to Jason Anderson. They're flat horrendous. 38 to 17. Post. They're young. We're going to get well, yeah, time. but 38 17. Wake Forest wins it. We've got much more coming on Capital One Bowl Week. Five games today. We're just getting started. Colorado State and TCU in the Acts of Liberty Bowl at 3 30 Eastern Time. Battle of Conference Champions there. ESPN 2 at 3 30. We'll take you to Georgia Tech and Fresno State. Fresno State having to deal with some suspensions. Georgia Tech wanting to get that game against Georgia and that taste out of their mouth forever and always. That's just getting you started on the afternoon of New Year's Eve, the final day of 2002. Iowa State and Boise State trying to go out in style. Cyclones by three at the brink. You have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger, to redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 90 health club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure and check out the entire Bowflex Flex lineup or visit us on the web today. What the new Bowflex for ultimate results. Anytime, Scott. See you. Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. And we're at halftime with the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. A big surprise here is that Iowa State, a 12-point underdog, is dominated on both sides of the line of scrimmage and is up by three at halftime. Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Punch, along with Randy Wright. And, Randy, it has to be a surprise for the fact that not only has Iowa State dominated in yards, they've dominated in time of possession. Boy, that's exactly what Dan McCartney wanted to have happen. Keep that high-powered Boise State offense on the sideline, and he's done a great job of doing that. Keep in mind, he's doing a lot with his best player, who has spent a lot of time on the sideline. And look at the numbers for the first half. I mean, Boise State leads the nation 517 yards a game, 47 points. They've got a total 
of 107 yards here in the first half uh, for Boise State and uh, not much more for, for Iowa State, but much more efficient. Well, you look at the third downs, 0 for 5 for Boise State. That's why they've only had the ball under 11 minutes, 19 minutes for Iowa State. They survived that first quarter with Seneca Wallace being on the sideline. And the two stars coming in, Seneca Wallace and Brock Forsey. There were the numbers entering the game, 29 touchdowns for Forsey. You see Wallace's numbers there. Today, well, most of Forsey's yards have not been running the football. No, exactly. They've controlled him from the line of scrimmage. 69 of those yards came on two kickoff returns. So plays from scrimmage, Iowa State's done a nice job of shutting him down. Key plays early on. First possession for the Cyclones. Seneca Wallace takes a lick on that left knee. Boy, they were lucky this wasn't much worse. He did spend most of the first half on the sideline. Now the two touchdowns. Boise State took the lead on Brock Forsey's run, but Iowa State came right back when Seneca Wallace came into the game, threw a bullet, and put them back ahead. So looks as though Wallace will be okay. Seneca, his team, doing a great job offensively, defensively, and special teams. They've taken the game to Boise State. We talked earlier, McCartney wanted to keep this game close. How is Boise State going to react when they're in a tight ball game when they haven't been in one all year? And there's the man that they want to be able to get it done in the second half, Brock Forsey. Western Athletic Conference Offensive MVP of the year. And take a look at the total offense. What a difference. 517 yards average. Number one in the nation today. A paltry 107 here in the first half. You can say the weather has something to do with it. I would agree. It doesn't have near as much as the Iowa State defense. And some halftime festivities continuing here in beautiful Boise. Folks, the weather may be a little bit overcast today, but what a gorgeous town we are in. Boise, Idaho. The teams went snowmobiling. We'll show you some of that later on. They had a great time up in the mountains skiing. Very, very wonderful hospitality with folks at the World Sports uh, Humanitarian Hall of Fame here. We'll tell you about some of the inductions they've had in the past and coming up in this April. And right now, we are set for the second half kickoff here in the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Tyler Jones' kick will be taken three yards deep in the end zone, and Lance Young will take a knee right there. Well, Randy, if you're uh, Dan Hawkins, you know you talk to your defense. Very imperative that they stop Seneca Wallace and company here in this opening drive in the second half. Well, I, I think with the conditions being what they are, the advantage certainly goes to Seneca Wallace in the Iowa State offense because he can make more plays just by ad-libbing and creating than Boise State can. So you almost have to change your theory, take a little more of a risk, come after him from the outside, and force him to throw the ball. Well, to take it, call is on number 25, 30. And back pedals and may have all actually lugged very close to the first down. May had the first down and backed up to the 28 yard line. Well, when they can spread that defense out by formation, you open up that middle. He got a wonderful block from his tailback, Brian Thompson, and he's got such good vision to be able to see where things develop. That's a big play. Take a look here again. You spread them out, you wait, let the pass rush come, and then you just follow your blockers. There you saw number two Thompson throwing that block, and that could turn out to be even a bigger play. Inside handoff and nailed at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. Michael Wagner was the ball carrier. Andy Avalos, the leading tackler, just nails Wagner about a half a yard shy of the sticks. Well, we saw the first hard hit by Boise State, but this is what happened in the first half. The physical play that Iowa State brought to this game. They thought they were bigger, stronger. They wanted to take the game to Boise State and play physical. And uh, he, didn't, uh, he did not get there. They will mark him about six inches shy if the line judge's foot is where the ball mark is. And that will bring up a fourth down for the Cyclones. Well, Doc, I think we know what 
Dan Hawkins was talking about at halftime. They've been taking it to us physically. we got to get physical. Watch them come off the ball. They get lower than the Iowa State offensive lineman. And when you get lower, Seneca Wallace has no place to grab his footing. And that was a nice stand on second and third down there. When Iowa State only needed a yard for the first down, they need to play with the kind of physical effort that Iowa State did in the first half. Emory Company showing some tough defense to open the second half. Troy Blankenship back to punt it away for Iowa State. And a high floater taken down at the 35 by Gilligan. And he will not get even a half a yard. He is nailed. Barbara Flagg comes in late on the return. I think we're going to see the interference penalty go against Iowa State here. This should tack on another 10 yards and give Boise State outstanding field position. 37-yard punt, one-yard return by Gilligan, who, by the way, may have been the reason that the halo violation, the halo rule was was uh, convened by the NCAA a couple of years ago. He, he refuses to call for a fair catch and was nailed a couple of times against Fresno State and uh, hit pretty hard. So uh, the NCAA said, you know what, we need to protect these guys a little more. It's why the two-yard violation, the halo, I should say. 10-yard penalty, first down. The 10-yard penalty, uh, Ken Rivera, the Mountain West Conference official. As you take a look at the push uh, from behind, when we come back, the Broncos on offense for the first time in the second half. You are a cyberjack. You bid on memorabilia. You're addicted to fantasy football. You outscore your kids in these sports PC games. You need more memory, tough guy. Fantasy freeze up. Don't let your system slow you down. A memory upgrade from Crucial.com can speed up your computer so you can keep up with the pros. You are a cyberjock. Crucial.com. The memory experts. All new 220 horses and one more thing. So, so. All new 220 horsepower Mazda 6. It's the most wonderful week. It's a New Year's Eve bash. Casey Clawson and the Vols battled Butkus Award winner E.J. Henderson and the Turfs. Capital One Bowl Week continues with the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl tonight at 7.30 on ESPN. According to ESPN, a great holiday gift. Buy it now. There is a start. There is a finish. And in the journey between, there are dreams. The NCAA Hall of Champions keeps these dreams alive for you. More than a museum, the NCAA Hall of Champions takes you on an interactive journey. Relive some of the most inspirational moments in collegiate sports history and walk in the steps of a student-athlete. At the NCAA Hall of Champions, you'll find something for every fan. Discover what it means to be a champion. The journey begins inside. And back in a sold-out Bronco Stadium in Boise, Idaho. Probably 27 of the 30,000 here are local faithful pulling for their Boise State Broncos, who, by the way, are 25-1 and one on this blue turf since 1998. Almost unbeatable here, but right now they trail to Iowa State. 4 c Running with uh, an attitude here on the opening play of the second half for Boise State. Let's check it on the sidelines with Taylor Cox. Hi, Dan Hawkins remains very optimistic in the locker room. He stressed the importance of offense. He said our running game is okay, but we have got to find a way to get the passing game on track. Look for them to incorporate a lot more receivers here in the second half. He said we had way too many three and outs. We have got to emphasize the importance of time of possession in the second half. This is a very confident Bronco team on the blue turf. And they're working, twerking for by the conference is showing through four wide receivers set to completion to Billy Wingfield, the senior out of Long Beach, California. And Doc, I was, uh, excuse me, Boise State took over with the best field position they'd had today, their own 46-yard line. With that kind of field position, you heard Heather talking to Dan 
Hawkins, they can open things up a little bit more. Here's a nice little bubble screen to the wide receiver. Linemen get out, throw in their blocks. This turned out to be a big play, even though the ball was only thrown two or three yards downfield. Opening drive, second half for Boise State. Dan Woody fakes the handoff. Looking deep, has a receiver in the end zone. It's Swilly, and no flag there. The defender playing Swilly. Anthony Forrest, the strong safety there on the coverage. Well, you can hear the Boise State fans voicing their disapproval of no flag on that. Dinwiddie had his receiver Swilly open and just under threw the ball a little bit. Take a look and we, if we see if we can see Anthony Forrest. Does he turn around before the ball gets there? He's coming right at you. He puts his arms up and runs right through him. This is probably a better angle right there. Clear contact made before the ball got there. That easily could have drawn a flag. I'm not so sure I would uh, agree with the no call there either. Second and ten. Opening possession, second half for the Broncos. Wide open again is Wingfield. Side steps a tackler and runs out of bounds at the 21. Doc, this Boise State offense is not good enough to be one-dimensional. They have got to be a throw and run. Nice throw out here, one-on-one -on -one coverage. You can see Boise State getting their receivers involved. And I'm Jerry Punch, Randy Wright, Heather Cox here at the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Sixth annual event here at Bronco Stadium in Boise, Idaho. Glad to have you with us as we kick off our New Year's Eve coverage here. Little college football fireworks, ESPN style. Then when he looks back, Wingfield has a reception and gets brought down at about the six-yard line. Great touchdown saving tackle by Anthony Forrest. A very well-designed play by Boise State. Ellis Hobbs, the cornerback. Watch him gamble here. There's Wingfield right in front of you. Watch Hobbs gamble from behind. Go for the tackle. When you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage and no free safety help, you got to stay in front of the receiver. You can't gamble and be wrong. Boise State very efficient in the red zone this year. First and goal, opening second half possession, Forsey! And he will be stopped just shy at about the one and a half to two yard line. This drive, the Broncos have done what they didn't do at all in the first half. They've taken over the line of scrimmage. They're firing off the ball, they're finishing their blocks. Take a look at this as Forsey piles it up in there, dunk, dipping his shoulder and delivering the hit rather than taking them. And the pitch back, Forsey will score. Touchdown for Boise State. This half has started the exact opposite of how the game started. Where Iowa State was physical, Boise State was sitting back. Iowa State got the ball to start this half, went three and out. Boise State was much more physical, and they followed that up on offense with a strong drive. Whatever Dan Hawkins said to his team at halftime in the locker room, they should can that and sell it because it obviously worked. The electric blue of Boise State coming out with an attitude here in the second half. As Nick Goliath Kai will add the extra point. It is up and good. And now the Broncos move back out top by four. Opening possession of the second half. Physical up front. And how about one drop forcing? Yeah, I'm coming in from two yards out. Broncos retake the lead. From a place called Boise, we invite you to escape to a place so unexpected, a world so incredible, it has the power to ignite your imagination. Come visit the city that will capture your heart, your mind, and your soul. Here in spectacular Boise, Idaho. What do you call a sports sedan? That's more sports than sedan. The all 
new 220 horsepower Mazda 6. It happens on weekends in towns and cities across the country. Men and women go off to train as soldiers, then come back home to their families, to their friends, to their jobs, and to the rest of their lives. There are more than 180 ways to be a soldier in the Army Reserve, and you can train for many of them right where you live. Become an Army of One. Join the Army Reserve. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, come on. Catch the ball before you run with it. Let's Basketball go. 101. Basketball 101. Catch somebody. Catch somebody now. Oh, what are you there doing? There we go. Just like we drew it up. Tangled up with the It's a disgrace. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. Now that's what I'm talking about! ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Brought to you by the all-new 220 horsepower Mazda 6 sports sedan. That's the Bronco right out in front of the stadium here. Beautiful carving of the Bronco. And there's a look at the mountains. They call them the Boise Foothills. They're only about 7,000. They say only about 7,000 feet. Part of the front range of the Rocky Mountains. Gorgeous area up here in Boise, Idaho. Tyler Jones will kick it away. Lance Young waits at his own one. Other side, 25. And flags come in, but he will be brought down at about the 29-yard line. This flag is going to go against Iowa State for an illegal block in the back. And it was clear right in front of Young, the ball carrier. And this is going to back Iowa State up deep inside their own territory. See, Dan McCartney's not very happy with that at all. Very obvious right in front of the ball. On the return, block in the back, receiving team. That penalty will be in four to the goal. First down. Take a look be on the right side of your screen, 87 right there, just reaches out and pushes. Nullifies a pretty nice return there by Lance Young. Well, second possession of the second half of the Cyclones, Seneca Wallace and company. Deep in their own territory. to Wagner. He is chased out. He may have gotten the yard. You hear this uh, partisan Boise State crowd starting to make some noise here. Quentin Michael, conference Michael defensive Wayne MVP, there on the stop. This is where you wish you had that big, strong offensive line to just pound this ball out from your end zone. You see no hole there for Wagner, and Michael comes up and just throws Wa Wagner down to the ground. Nice tackle, and Quentin Michael, his 50th straight start today. What a player he's been. Indeed he has. There's Orca Clinton. Maybe the best football player if you talk us to the coaches in the entire Western Athletic Conference. Second down inside, handoff, big hole, left side, and up to the 15 comes Wagner. Well, you talk about Quentin Michael, the one safety, and here you see West Nurse, number 21, come up on Wagner and make that tackle. The strength of the secondary certainly has been their two safeties. Nurse, only a junior, called on today to come up and enforce the run more so than pass coverage. Talked to the Iowa State coaches yesterday, said we must run the football effectively. We've had seven consecutive years of 1,000-yard rushers. We did not have one this year. They had... The Davis boys, Troy and Dare, Ennis Haywood, is down in the NFL, and this year they did not get the production they wanted from the tailback spot. Third and a couple, and Seneca looks upfield, throws it out of bounds, got some pressure, pass intended for Jamal Montgomery, but great pressure by Cameron Merritt, the outside linebacker. Well, great coverage also by Dave Franklin and by Julius Brown. Nobody really open. Brown does a nice job of getting in front of Montgomery that time and take away the angle that Wallace had to try and get the ball there. Good coverage forcing Iowa State again. Second time in a row now. Three and out and look to get good field position. Two unproductive possessions here for the Cyclones. Iowa State's, excuse me, Doc. Iowa State's only had four three and outs all game. Two of them the last two drives. 
his own goal line. Troy Blankenship standing on his walk. And a low end over end kick taken at midfield and immediately brought down by Ellis Hobbs, the cornerback. Back with the Broncos, second, second half possession in just a moment. College basketball on ESPN. It's a primetime doubleheader to cap off a full day of rim rocking action. First, North Carolina and their star freshman Rashad McCants take it strong to the hole against Miami. Then, two heavyweights trade blows as Chris Hill and Michigan State look to shut down Oklahoma's silky smooth guard Hollis Price. North Carolina, Miami, and Michigan State, Oklahoma cap a full Saturday of college hoops on ESPN and ESPN2. Hello, hello, hello. What's with the reverb thing in car ads? Reverb, reverb, reverb. Yeah. At Volkswagen, we just offer all 2003 models with over 50 standard features, great resale values, and a promise to work with you until you're behind the wheel of a German-engineered car. But we can do the whole reverb thing, too, I guess. Echo, echo, echo. Through January 2nd, buy or lease any new Volkswagen model and receive $500 in Volkswagen accessories at no extra charge. Don't just ring in the new year, rev it in during the Dodge Rev in the New Year event. It's your final chance this year to grab life in a brand new Dodge with up to $2,500 cash allowance on select models or save big with 0% financing. Plus, grab the added security of Dodge's 770 powertrain limited warranty. Up to $2,500 cash allowance or 0% financing. But the party will be over before you know it. Rev into your Dodge dealer today. Boise State Broncos coming out here in the second half and uh, marching downfield to take the lead. A seven-play, 54-yard drive, 2.22 off the clock. That's where we stand here in the third quarter with Boise State up by four over Iowa State. Long pass downfield and reaching out for it is Lou Finucchi. He can't get there. Let's check back in the studio with Reese. And, Doc, we're just getting started in Capital One Bowl Week here on New Year's Eve 2002. The Axe of Liberty Bowl coming up at 3.30 Eastern Time. Conference champions, Colorado State and TCU. Then Tennessee and Maryland in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Doc, I'm handling these promos for you. I'm going to need a check. And thank you very much, Reese. Uh, Iowa State uh, trying to stop Boise State here in the second half. Then Whitty, 10 of 20, throwing the football for 96 yards. And this time he will hand it off inside the Forsey again. And still on his feet, fighting down near the 47. Let's check in on the sidelines where Heather Cox is calling up with a very special guest. Special indeed. In fact, Kale Sanderson has a record. We'd all envy 159-0 as a wrestler at Iowa State. You just concluded your playing career as a Cyclone. What are you doing now wrestling-wise? Uh, now I'm just trying to get ready for the World Championships coming up in September and then the following year at the Olympics. So. Now you are here as an honorary captain of the Humanitarian Bowl. You were actually asked months before Iowa State was invited. Tell me about your reactions when you heard the Cyclones would be here. Uh, well, it was a pleasant surprise. You know, it was uh, it's a lot of fun watching watching the Cyclones and being a part of it. So we were real excited. You are also able to talk at the Humanitarian Dinner. Tell us what it was like and, and what your message is for the Humanitarian Hall of Fame. Uh, well, I just tried to tell the guys uh, who are uh, speaking about a champion. I told them that a champion's a uh, person who does the very best all the time, and I just kind of went off on that a little bit and rambled on, I guess. <laughs> well, Kale, we can't think of a better champion to have here. Congratulations on all your success. Let's go back up to the booth. Thanks, Heather. What a record, 159-0. and 0. He must be a Randy Wright kind of athlete. Just incredible. You know, Doc, I don't know if I've ever done anything 159 <laughs> times. I've missed shots. Here comes the end around. finucchi has got some speed. 30-25. Cuts it back. And had to get by one more block and couldn't quite get it. Matt Word, great pursuit by the senior from Miami, Florida. Matt Word makes a stop. But Finucchi gains 25 on the end around. Boy, was this set up well and executed perfectly. Spinucci comes around. See if we can pick up 56. Huff, his center, throws a great block right there, well down the field. Look at all the blue jerseys out in front of Finucchi here. 
and nothing but bluegrass today. There's 56, Scott Huff in front of you. Watch him deliver that block, taking Hobbs right off of his feet. Boy, Bill Curry would have loved that block. He loves seeing those centers do that downfield. Most centers don't run that well. Well, he's got excellent feet. He's got hit up, cuts it back, four seat inside the 10 yard line. By the way, that play a moment ago by Finucci, the first play today over 20 yards. Two big play offenses yet. Most of the plays have been short ones throughout the afternoon. Doc, you can sense Boise State taking control of this game and somebody for Iowa State needs to step up and make the play. Boise State's not a team that turns it over often, but you need to force that kind of turnover, a big hit, a negative yardage play. Somebody's got to be that leader out there. Second and five. They will hand it off to Michael in the backfield, cuts it back, following his blockers, and pushes the pile down to about the six-yard line. Boise State really doing a nice job of getting the wide receivers involved, and then that opened up the running game for them. Billy Wingfield, the leading receiver for this team, only had one catch in the first half, already three here in the second half, and you've seen him get Chase Woolley involved. A couple of attempts at Lou Finucchi. All that contributes to the success they're having on the ground as well. But the big guys up front, uh, Randy, are getting the job done. The offensive lineman, big hole right side, closes quickly for Forsey. And Nick Leader is the true freshman nose guard of Omaha there to make the stop. Boy, Nick Leaders, you haven't called his name a lot today. He is a true freshman, but the newcomer of the year for Iowa State. He's still a little small, 275 pounds. They want to get him in the weight room in the offseason, build him up, bulk him up a little bit, get him up to about 295. But he's been a real pleasant surprise this year. So Iowa, so Boise State controlled that line here in that second half. Fourth of the yard. You've got the best offense in the nation. Sure, you're going to go for it, right? Lone setback is Forsey. He gets the ball, cuts it inside, three-yard line. He will have the first down, make it first and goal for Boise State. Giving up the opportunity for the points. When you've got the momentum, things are working well for you. You give a little confidence to your offense going for it on fourth and one right there. And that offensive line really fired off the ball, opened up a big hole. Let's check in with Heather. Guys, it's nothing new that Dan Hawkins would go for it on fourth down. He is infamous for his risk-taking. In fact, over the last two years, he's gone for it about 65% of the time and converts on about 50% of those. So this is nothing new for Bronco fans. That's a coach with a lot of job security. No doubt about that. First and goal, Ben Witte fakes the pitch, rolls right, tries to keep it himself down to the one-yard line, reaches for the goal line, and... No signal. They say he did not, he did not quite get there. Great effort by Ryan Dinwiddie, the junior, out of Elk Grove, California. Well, it was excellent effort. Good coverage in the secondary. Not quite enough quickness to get in there, but look at the dive. Stretching out, takes the hit. Boy, that was close. Excellent effort. But the ball hits the pylon. Good call, but boy, I don't know if it could be any closer to the goal line without being on it. Dan Winnie, the first team, all whack selection. Coming up the 10th play of the drive. Quarterback sneak and touchdown for Boise State. This crowd is saying, yeah, that's what we're accustomed to seeing here on <laughs> all year long. Physical football running it for Boise State. Take a look at the offensive line come off the ball here, pushing the white jerseys deep into the end zone, which allows Dinwiddie an opportunity to pick up the two inches he needed at that point. Nick Kaliakai. Nick Kaliakai. A record-setting kicker here for Boise State. will add the extra point. And on consecutive scores, the second half. It's 21-10, but Seneca Wallace, Mr. Excitement, will be back on the field when we come back for a cyclone. Stay with us. You are a cyberjack. You bid on memorabilia. You're addicted to fantasy football. You outscore your kids in the sports PC game. 
You need more memory, tough guy. Fantasy freeze up. Don't let your system slow you down. A memory upgrade from Crucial.com can speed up your computer so you can keep up with the pros. You are a cyber jock. Crucial.com. The memory experts. All new, 220 horses, and one more thing. So, so. All new 220 horsepower Mazda 6. All around the world, Siemens is energizing the cities and towns we live in. We engineer new ways to efficiently generate, distribute, and use power. And by providing energy to people everywhere, we're giving them the power to live better. Casey Clawson and the Balls battle E.J. Henderson and the Turks. Capital One Bowl Week continues with the Chick-fil-A Beach Bowl tonight at 7.30 on ESPN. Big second half for Boise State. Two consecutive scores on two possessions. They are up by 11, and Seneca Wallace and company getting set to go back on offense here. Todd Miller in his own five, cuts it back, and will be brought down at the 20-yard line. Doc, just as Boise State got their receivers involved in their offense and has led to two straight touchdowns, Iowa State has got to do the same thing. They don't run the ball well enough, and they can't rely solely on Seneca Wallace and his feet to get themselves back in the game. His feet are very dangerous in the passing game, but that only works when there's the threat of the pass, and they haven't shown they can do that yet. We just joined our coverage, when I mentioned Iowa State, without two of their defensive starters who were ruled ineligible before the game today, the Big 12. Not allowing him to play. They couple of them up in the stands. You heard Heather reporting that earlier, but uh, they are playing some second and third teamers in their secondary, but let's see if the cycle on offense can get on track. Wallace looking deep, upfield, and Lane Danielson couldn't quite get there. Good call, though. You've got to stretch this defense a little bit. Iowa State has not taken a shot deep yet in this game, and you can see the Boise State defenders starting to creep closer to that line of scrimmage. Incomplete pass, but it sends a good message. and company hoping to be able to vindicate themselves of that frustrating and, uh, as they put it, embarrassing loss on their home field up at Ames to finish the year against Connecticut. Wallace has a receiver and great coverage coming at the last minute by Julius Brown, a right quarterback, passing to him for Jack Whitley. Ball thrown into a little bit of traffic there, got tipped up, unfortunately, for Iowa State. That ball wasn't intercepted. You could hear the crowd getting involved here, and the Boise State players trying to get that crowd more involved. Maybe a good time to run a reverse, something that works against their momentum. We've seen the Broncos do it with success. Maybe a good time for Iowa State to think about it. Third and ten for the Cyclones. Third consecutive possession. They have yet to move out of the shadow of their own end zone here in the second half. Wallace 0 for 6 on his last passes. This one overthrown, intended again for Whitford. And uh, let's check in on the sidelines. Heather, this, this win today, if they would hold on, would be very important for Boise State. Right, Jerry. The 19 Boise State seniors on the field have won three conference championships, two humanitarian bowls, and 39 of their 49 games. They also reached the top 25 for the first time in school history, but they've done it all without beating the team from the BCS. In fact, BC, BSU is 0-12 all-time against BCS team. Today's clash with Iowa State of the Big 12 is either lucky or Lucky number 13. Jerry? Trying to hold on, rank 15th in the country, and get a win. Great punt. What a rocket mortar shot by Blankenship, all the way back at his own 25. This Gilligan has a seam. Gilligan could go. 
goal. And Blankenship, the punter, brings him down, trips him up at the 40-yard line. A 54-yard punt and a 36-yard return. So often you see you outkick your coverage. I think that's what happened here. Gilligan is back. He's got time to react. Makes a couple of men miss, but brings it back right up the middle where he's got a lot of blocking. Nice job catching that ball and taking it north and south. And look at junior wide receiver Tim Gilligan. You know, that, back to Heather's comment about being 0-12 against the BCS. You really feel that Iowa State represents Iowa and, and the Big Ten, but Boise State really represents the entire WAC and has a chance to make a statement here today. Then when he back to pass, and he will be leveled back at his own uh, back of about, about the 47 yard line brandon brown comes in from the weak, weak side linebacker spot brandon brown leads this team in tackles one of the few times iowa state has been able to get to dinwiddie today and i think this is the kind of defense they need to stick with they need to get Boise state's offense out of this rhythm that they felt comfortable in here in this third quarter of eight yards on that one. It'll bring up second and 18. Back on defense trying to bow its neck a little bit. And Buddy once again looking upfield. He'll tuck it himself and throws it across the middle and Swilly could not hold on. Jay Swilly got his hands on it. Down about the 35. Boy, it's been a wonderful second half for Boise State. They've done it offensively, getting the wide receivers involved. Greenfield on a little swing out here. Brock Corsi, of course, getting into the end zone. And then the reverse, the trick play, which they've run very well. And, of course, Dinwiddie with the last touchdown right there. Everything has gone their way here in the third quarter. Look at the difference in the first and almost as many yards as they had the entire first half. And we still have two and a half to go here in the third quarter. You get the feeling that this Iowa State defense doesn't stiffen and they give up any more points. The offense is not in any kind of rhythm. It may be insurmountable. Well, then when he getting up to Wingfield actually stumbled and fell and got back up and still almost made the catch. A great effort by Billy Wingfield. But couldn't quite get his hands back on the football. They got one-on-one -on -one coverage. Pretty decent throw but just to slip, as you said, and can't get back up onto his feet and make that catch. Not bad coverage over there by T. Austin. Well, first punt of the second half for, for Boise State, Keith Shuttler. Back to boot it away. To Todd Miller, we mentioned earlier, he has two punt returns for touchdowns on the season. Well, Todd Miller, we mentioned earlier, he has two punt returns for touchdowns this year. And Miller will let that one hit at about the four. Stops on the year. Almost takes a knuckleball roll and bounds into the end zone. And Iowa State will get it on the end play. Well, you heard about the play, the special play, but you never heard it from the man's mouth himself. Here's Seneca talking about the Texas Tech run. The play call was Trey Wright rip, and this is how it developed. It was a three-step drop. I looked to my first receiver. He wasn't there. At this point, I was running out trying to make a play. And after nine came by me trying to make a tackle, I figured I'd go out of bounds. And I decided to go up the sideline and try to make a play. I cut back across the, the grain, got a beautiful block by my uh, running back, Michael Wagner. And after that, I was like, hey, I'm getting in the end zone. And I got an escort by my receiver, Jamal Montgomery. And that was the play of the year. Yeah, all right, indeed that was. And by the way, that's the play everybody talked about. I mean, it was it was third, it was second and 11 at the Texas Tech 12 yard line. And he ran 135 yards to score from 12 yards out. You know, I don't think I ran that far in my career. <laughs> <laughs> and with my speed, I'd still be running today, probably. Seneca Wallace has got to be careful here. When his team struggled at the end of the year, one in five, he threw 12 interceptions. He has a tendency to put too much pressure on his shoulders force things to happen that's where the turnovers come they're down 21 to 10 but he's got plenty of time he needs to be patient and off and nothing doing hiawatha weapon run out of bounds may have lost a yard glad to have you with us we are at the crucial.com humanitarian ball here in boise idaho i'm jerry punch along with randy wright heather cox down on the sidelines and the 
Western Athletic Conference champion Boise State Broncos roaring back here. Touchdowns on three of the last five possessions, both of the opening second half possessions. And a lot of hard hitting here in this one. The difference, Doc, is the first half Iowa State was doing the hitting. The second half, it's been the Broncos. Third and ten for the Cyclones. Wallace tucks it up. 25 months into the 30-yard line. Kick. And loses the shoe. And will go down at about the 22. If Seneca Wallace is going to run with the ball, make him run up the middle. Don't let him get to the outside. Nice job by the perimeter players for Boise State, forcing him to the middle. Now when he tries to get to the outside, you've got more of your players that can come a shorter distance. Take a second look with what Seneca sees. Boy, it looks open. He tucks it and goes. But then as he tries to get to the sideline, just too many bodies to avoid. That was not a shoe string tackle. That was a whole shoe tackle. He took the whole shoe off of Seneca Wallace. As Troy Blankenship, last time he boomed a 54-yarder. This time he gets another good kick. A high floater down to Tim Gilligan, and it'll be out of bounds as they'll mark it out up around the 40-yard line. Great week for the teams and players and fans here at the Crystal Dot in 1999, John L. Smith, then the head coach of Louisville, decided to give his team a and outdoors in the Boise area. Lil did Smith know that his staff would start a, a humanitarian bowl tradition as each year the teams participate in a game and get a chance to ride the snowmobiles. Lots of fun activities this week here for the teams in and around Boise. Beautiful early in the week here. As they hand it off this time to Tanuki, he cuts it back, still dancing around, and will lose maybe a yard on that play. Now, they ran that play early in the second half in game 25 on the end around of Tanuki, but nothing doing there. But you, you have to like the play calling, though. They've got the lead. They've got the momentum. They've got excellent field position, but they're not getting conservative at all. They're still trying to spread things out. You have to like that kind of play calling by Chris Peterson, their offensive coordinator. Chris Peterson, an assistant for many, many years under Mike Bellotti at Oregon, came here under Dan Hawkins, 38 years of age, very young staff for Boise State, the average 34 years of age. They've got a couple of assistants that are in their 20s. Hawkins, the head coach, the oldest, he is 42. Ben Whitty with the pass completion, though they say he did not have possession as he's as force he slid out of bounds now to bring up the third and 11. as iowa state starts to bring more pressure to try and get to dinwiddie and disrupt his rhythm he's going to have opportunities to hit receivers for big plays because that'll put iowa state in one-on-one -on -one coverage final 16 seconds coming your way of the third quarter here this crucial dot com humanitarian ball from boise idaho Western Athletic Conference champion Boise State. Perfect 8-0 record. Up by 11 here. As Dean Woody looks to throw it downfield one more time. Going deep. And overthrows the intended receiver, Jerry Smith. Pretty good coverage that time. And it looked as though Smith got held up as he was trying to break away. You see Atif Austin on the coverage. Watch as he makes his break right there. He kind of gets held up a little bit. Just enough to maybe throw him off stride. Shetler back to punt on 4th and 11. Iowa State's defense for the first time holding Boise State to a three and out and now look to get what should be a decent field position. And it's blocked as Shetler recovers the block. The great field position, Anthony Forrest. The strong safety in for the Cyclones to make the block. That's exactly what Iowa State needed. Some something to change the momentum here in the second half. Oh, you talked about Anthony Forrest. He's a special teams player called on to step up today to start at the safety. Dan McCartney knows his team needs something like this to get this momentum on his side. Forrest looks like he's going to come right up the middle. They run a little stunt. Forrest does a great job of laying out and blocking that punt. Just a great play. Nothing can turn the tide in a game like a special teams turn 
turnover or a big play by your defense. And this is the best opportunity the Cyclones have had here in the second half. Now Seneca and company need to capitalize. Doc, I don't think they can do it without getting their wide receivers involved. They've got to start throwing the ball. And they hand it off. Big hole right side for, for Wagner. And ball comes out. And looks like Boise State has jumped on to the turnover bump. That's exactly what bit Iowa State during the second half of the year, Randy, when they were one and five in those last six games. They turned the ball over time and again. One of the most secure ball control teams only lost five fumbles in the last five years. The most inopportune to lose one here. Well, the change of possession. Wagner gets through the hole, but gets popped, and the ball comes out. Boise State's football when we come back. Which sports center do you watch? Mornings, evenings, late nights, only on ESPN. You are a cyber jock. You bid on memorabilia. You're addicted to fantasy football. You outscore your kids in any sports PC game. You need more memory, tough guy. I'm out of fantasy freeze up. Don't let your system slow you down. A memory upgrade from Crucial.com can speed up your computer so you can keep up with the pros. You are a cyber jock. Crucial.com. The memory experts. You have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger, to redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Quite possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 90 health club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure. And check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web at bowflexultimate.com today. The new Bowflex for ultimate results. The conference season is back. Look at the dip and look at the with the return of Big Monday as Big East powers Notre Dame and Pittsburgh square off. Followed by Big 12 favorite Kansas against Iowa State. Then, Super Tuesday debuts with Oklahoma taking on Connecticut and SEC heavyweight Florida against up-and-coming Mississippi State. Big Monday presented by Bud Light January 6th. Super Tuesday presented by Dollar Rent-A-Car January 7th on ESPN and ESPN2. Back in Boise, Idaho, Iowa State, Boise State as we start the fourth quarter. The Boise State 21 to 10 and firmly in control of the game. Starting the fourth quarter here, and he'll keep it on the ground. Boise cuts it back up to about the 25-yard line. Let's check in back in the studio with Reese Davis. Reese, some ball is underway in El Paso, Doc. Washington and Purdue, no team in the country shot itself in the foot more often than Purdue. They fumbled a punt snap, set up Washington on the doorstep. That is Cody Pickett to Patrick Reddick, and then Kyle Orton puts the ball on the ground, and Mark Heath Cooper will scoop that thing up, a little scoop and score, and just like that, a couple of miscues, Huskies up 14-0. Thanks, Reese. A little scooping and scoring going on in El Paso. And Brock Forsey helped off the field. Uh, they're attending to him. He may have gotten a finger in the eye. He grabbed his eye and face and pulled his helmet off. We'll check on that momentarily. Heather will have an update. And off again. And stop. The line of scrimmage is David Michael. Well, that's a big injury for Boise State. When you've got the lead 21 to 10 in the fourth quarter, you want to run some time off of the clock. Take a look at his hit. See if we can pick up what happened to him. Just takes a shot, a couple of shots right into the head there. Take another look, see if we can see it a little better. Boy, helmet to the face mask. I, I saw him grab the face mask, but that was one heck of a lick. Boy, it was just helmet to helmet, as you said. First minute of the fourth quarter here at Bronco Stadium in Boise, Idaho. Bronco's trying to keep their drive alive, and that pass right up at the first down marks. Jay Swilly, they call him First Down Swilly. Look at Brock Forsey's numbers. 
on today. Slow this down a little bit. See, you can see that hit one, two, right after the other. And Boy, he reaches right up immediately. Now, he walked off on his own, but he looked like his neck got tweaked and a little, in a way, it wasn't supposed to go. He's in a lot of pain down there. As I said, this is when you'd really like to have him on. That You've got the lead. You'd like to run time off of the clock. Eye formation for the Broncos. A running formation. Tail might go get it. That's Michael. He's a speedster. Still on his feet. Fighting up near the 40-yard line. Gain of 11 yards by David Mike. The Cyclone defense has not been able to come up with the intensity to match the Bronco offense here in the second half. And in fact, as the game has gone on, you would think the bigger Iowa State defense would take control, but they have not been able to out-physical the Broncos. Just the reverse has happened, and that doesn't spell well for the, for the Cyclones who need to get the ball back and get a couple of scores on the board. Trying to burn the clock here. State owned the talent possession in the first half. And off again, the tailback. And Michael will get maybe back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Jordan Carstens, we haven't called his name much today, making his second tackle of the day. George Carstens made the tackle. Take a look at Jordan Carstens there. What a player he's been. A big 6'5", 300-pound junior captain. Coach tells him he, he's a the best player on the defensive line. He's got a great feel for the game. Academic All-American. Then when he is pulled down by Anthony Forrest, who has been all over this field today, blocks the punt. Makes a sack, has four individual tackles. What a job today by the strong safety for us. Well, you see him stepping up. He comes through unblocked right there. As a quarterback, you got to see where the unprotected guy's coming from and get rid of the ball. As you see, Dinwiddie never looks over to the left side. That's where he was outnumbered. That's where you got to bring your eyes right after the snap. Dinwiddie didn't look over there. Force gets in there. There's a difference in time of possession, first half and second half, and almost a uh, oh, eight-minute differential there in the first half, and then it's been all Boise State in the second half. Doc, sometimes that's a misleading statistic. Today, I think it's very indicative, though, because Boise State's done something with the time they've had the ball here in the second half. Well, Boise State wants to talk it over. We'll take a timeout and come back with more of the fourth quarter here with Boise Idaho. This is Boise State University, shaped by its location in one of America's most dynamic small cities, located in the midst of an unsurpassed natural environment. Boise State is a place where students connect to the world around them, from high technology to high culture, where student opportunities abound in an extensive internship program, where students use the great western outdoors as their classroom and as their playground. Boise State University, real education for the real world. Choose the Pontiac High Performance Play of the Year. Vote online at ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. The winning play will be announced live on the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Pontiac, fuel for the soul. My friends call me sensitive. I guess I am a bit. I really want to call them, but I simply can't commit. P.U. Me thinketh that stinketh. Alf, it's about 10, 10, 2, 20. Well, don't forget the best part. 99 cents for all calls up to 20 minutes. It's cheap. Write about that. I want to write about no monthly commitment, dude. What about no signing up? Yeah, I like that. Brother. Obviously from another mother. Dial 10, 10, 2, 20. There's no reason why that ball should have gone through Buckner's legs. There's no reason why any of the runs before that should have been scored. There's no reason why the Mets should have even been in the World Series. There's no reason why they should have won 108 games. They were outmanned by the Red Sox. The Red Sox had the most dominating players in baseball. The numbers had almost become sublime. There are numbers that are actually bigger than baseball. Laws of probability that supersede the rules of statistics. Things that are even bigger than the curse of the Bambino. Things that say that if you call heads 100 times in 100 seasons, that one of those times is going to have to land heads. 
back inside Bronco Stadium where Boise State is up 21-10. Minutes ago, running back Brock Forsey was injured on a play, came over to the sideline, looked at me and said, hey, I'm going right back in. He did not get poked in the eye. He actually got hit in the neck. But they call him the man of steel. He has never missed a practice in the four years he's been here. Only missed half of the game with a very severe ankle sprain. He won't miss the rest of this one, Jerry. What a tough young man. Brock Forsey, offensive player of the year in the conference, and there's the pass completed to Wingfield. Billy Wingfield, the senior out of Long Beach. Good safe throw, though. Good call by Boise State. Try to get the ball to the perimeter. Let your playmakers make some plays. Talk about Brock Forsey as you see him there, never missing a game. Heather just referred to, came into today's game, 789 career carries. It's a tremendous number to stay healthy. And Keith Shuttler will have to punt it away for Boise State. And Iowa State will get their first possession here in the fourth quarter. Back to Miller on his own 18. And great block, but Miller can't quite get sprung free and tumbles out of bounds at the 26. How about the block by Anthony Forrest? Tom Miller knocked out of bounds at the 26-yard line. And watch this block on the punt return. 31, Brad Allen gets leveled by Forrest. Iowa State ball when we come back. You are a cyber jock. You bid on memorabilia. You're addicted to fantasy football. You outscore your kids in any sports PC game. You need more memory, tough guy. Fantasy freeze up. Don't let your system slow you down. A memory upgrade from Crucial.com can speed up your computer so you can keep up with the pros. You are a cyber jock. Crucial.com. The memory experts. Still doing those bills, hon? <laughs> Just wrestling with a credit card balance. <laughs> You've been feeding on those high interest rates. <laughs> I just switched our balance over to a Capital One no-hassle card. Oh. You're going to save 500 bucks a year. 500 bucks? Switch your high-interest balance to the Capital One no-hassle card for the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates. You could save up to $500 a year. What's in your wallet? Get up! Fuel for the soul. These people are making a New Year's resolution to enjoy life. They all called Hair Club. If you feel good about yourself, you'll be able to accomplish anything you want. It was the best phone call I ever made. The me that you see right now is the me that I want you to see. It's the best me. That's what Hair Club is. Make your resolution. Call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB today. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Presented by Crucial.com. Performance matters at Crucial Technology. Visit the memory experts today at Crucial.com. And in part by Capital One. And back to play here with the Cyclones on offense for the first time in the fourth quarter. And pass complete upfield. That one to Lance Young. Got a glimpse a moment ago, excuse me, Randy, of those two beautiful trophies uh, that Boise State won here in 99 and 2000. The Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl trophies uh, in the uh, museum next door to the, to the uh, stadium. Here. There's a look at Dan McCarney. What a job he has done. He's eighth year at, at Iowa State. And it is offense control the first half but they have struggled here in the second half when you take a look at that four possessions three and out the only other possession was a fumble zero passing yards here in the second half until that last play wallace takes a handoff as the receiver under throws montgomery up at about the 45. 
neither one of these teams are good enough to be able to focus just on one part of their offense. We saw Boise State open things up, get their wide receivers involved. They led to their points in the second half. Iowa State still hasn't been able to do that. When Iowa State hasn't gotten the receivers involved, you take away one of the most powerful things you have on offense, and that's Seneca Wallace's legs. Wallace only 7 of 18 for 51 yards. Second and 10 for the Cyclones. 10.45, all that's left to play here and this crucial.com humanitarian ball. Again complete, upfield, near the midfield mark with Lane Danielson. Nice throw by Wallace, just getting the ball out to one of his possession type receivers. Simple little pass play, he reads the coverage, knows what it is, and those little things will start building a little more confidence. You open that up a little bit, your linebacker's got to take a little wider stance that makes it a little easier for your lineman to block when you do want to run it. First and ten, midfield. Best drive of the second half for Iowa State. And gaining of a couple there is Brian Thompson. The tone for this second half was set on the first drive for Iowa State. They had a third and a foot, and Seneca Wallace couldn't pick it up. Then you take a look at the tone with the hitting that they brought to the game in the second half. And then forcing the fumble well after Iowa State had blocked the punt. Boise State comes right back with it, even a bigger play on their defense. What a year Iowa State has had playing one of the toughest, if not the toughest, maybe the second, I think it's like second toughest schedule in all of the NCAA Division I. Stepping out of the tackle, up to the 45, that is Brian Thompson, the freshman. Talking about their schedule, Randy, this is the ninth bowl team Iowa State will have played this year. Sixth ranked team they played away from home. And the fourth conference champion they played, they played Florida State, they won the ACC in the opener, the Eddie Robinson Classic. Of course, Big Ten co-champion Iowa, they beat at Iowa City, Big 12 champion Oklahoma, and now WAC champion Boise State. So what a tough schedule for the Southland. Uh, unbelievable. And there, there's no doubt they weren't intimidated coming in here. They've been in this position before. In fact, they were down big to Iowa, came back and won that game and gave the Hawkeyes their only loss. Seneca floats one up here. Did he make the catch? No, he couldn't quite hold on. Great acrobatic effort by Lance Young and Gabe Franklin who leads the nation with eight interceptions there on the coverage. Basically a free-for-all for the football. Boy, it was, and Young is the tallest of the receivers. The ball's thrown up high. Young gives a great effort to go after it, but it was just excellent position by Franklin fighting for that ball, making sure he jarred that thing out of Young's hands. Good. So much of playing pass defense is position. Now on fourth down, McCartney's in the position. He has to go for it. Down by 11, fourth and four. Ball on the scrimmage, the 44-yard line. Seneca, short drop, rifles the pass and not able to hang on. Had the first down to hold on Jack Whitfer, who is their best possession receiver. Couldn't quite get both hands on the football. Jack Whitmer, the intended receiver, is incomplete. Julius. Thursday, it's a battle between two of the nation's top quarterbacks. Heisman Trophy winner Carson Palmer leads number five USC against Heisman runner-up Brad Banks and the number three Iowa Hawkeyes. The FedEx Orange Bowl at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC Sports Championship Television. Well, you look at those numbers, do you have any questions why they finished 1-2 uh, for the Heisman there? Pretty impressive, huh? Iowa's only loss, by the way, came to the Cyclones in Iowa City. Forcey back in. He's the lone setback. Expected to run the football, and great defensive penetration by Matt Word, the middle linebacker. Matt Word having a heck of a game today. He had kind of an up-and-down season, second on this team in tackles, but of all the players on the field, his coach has told us he's probably got the best ability and can be the best player out there. Matt's brother, Mark, a defensive end for the Cleveland Browns, former All-American at Jacksonville State. Matt was the MVP last year in the uh, Mainstay Independence Bowl when they played Alabama and lost a heartbreaker there by one point late in the game.
State keeping things on the ground here. Second and 15. We're choosing to, to run the ball, take some time off of the clock. If they don't get the first down, thinking we can punt the ball deep into Iowa State territory, their offense has done nothing in this third, in this second half. So playing for field position right now rather than points. Boise State coaching box. Chris Peterson and Ron Collins both up there calling the shots. Peterson, the offensive coordinator. And then Moody back the pass. And there was contact before the ball got there, but no flag. <laughs> Ellis Hobbs may have gotten a little bit of a gotten away with one there. A little bit of a bump. And Dan Hawkins all the way out on the field talking to the official. Uh, he may have a legitimate complaint there. You called it as the play was happening. Hobbs certainly looked like he made contact. Take a look here, and you can see that as, as Dinwiddie throws the ball, right as Wingfield comes, couldn't pick it up as much from that angle as you saw it live. And I, I think Hawkins had a legitimate complaint there. A little double box look there from Jeff Montoni, our, our director. Great job, Jeff. Showed us the pass and uh, the interference, or, or I guess there was no interference. Here's the punt. He still showed you the interference. He just wasn't a flag. And Doc Miller takes it at his own 25. Still on his feet. Great balance by Miller. And I will say we'll start at their own 30-yard line. Trailing by 11, the Cyclones need to get untracked here in the final minutes of this one. It's the most wonderful week. It's a New Year's Eve bash. Casey Clawson and the Vols battled Butkus Award winner E.J. Henderson and the Terps. Capital One Bowl Week continues with the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl tonight at 7.30 on ESPN. If it and riff it, heck yeah. I think it's a great way to start a hole, but the bank, I don't think it'd be nearly as much fun if you put it first. Charles Howe III joins Golf's Best at the Mercedes Championships on ESPN. People in your life make all the difference. The best of times are the times with your friends. In my life, all my friends are with me to the end. Life is good when you've got your friends. Business is about connecting with people. That's why Cox Business Services provides the latest communications technology and the promise that we'll be there to back it up. Life is good when you've got your friends. Isn't it about time you start saving money on your monthly phone service? Well, now you can when you switch to Cox Digital Telephone today. You'll receive great savings every month with dependable service from Cox Communications. Plus, enjoy the same popular features Quest offers for less money. And you can even keep your existing phone number. Reliable service, crystal clear connections, and great savings all from Cox Digital Telephone. So where's the decision? Call Cox Communications and start saving today. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Presented by Crucial.com. Performance matters at Crucial Technology. Visit the memory experts today at Crucial.com. And in part by Capital One, who asks, what's in your wallet? the championship trophies next door in the museum here in lovely Boise, Idaho. 99 and 2000 champions of the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. <laughs> Iowa State down by 11. Nothing new to them being behind. They were down by 24 to Florida State. Down 24 to 7 at Iowa. And came back and beat Iowa and almost beat Florida State on the final play of the football game. They're not going to be anybody if they don't start catching the football. Well, they don't have many more opportunities to not do those kinds of things. With time running down, 7.34, they don't have to force the big play, but they can't let the easy ones get away from them like that. They, they have to start making things happen. Missed tackles, uh, something needs to happen. Somebody's got to step up and, and, and do something to get this thing going for them. A steady drizzle has been uh, falling since much of the day here in Boise. They were calling for snow flurries here in the afternoon. It was 42 degrees at kickoff. That I believe is in the high 30s here right now. And the rain's are letting up a little bit here in the fourth quarter. Seneca Wallace, only two of his last 13 attempts. Once again, and trying to get the ball to his top receiver, Lane Danielson. Quentin Michael there on the cut. Idaho, the sixth annual Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl featuring Iowa State in the Big 12, 
and Western Athletic Conference champion Boise State. I'm Jerry Punch along with Randy Wright and Heather Cox. Now well, you get your day started, your New Year's Eve started with a little college football fireworks here from the Humanitarian Bowl. And there's Dan McCartney who would like to be able to get a first down here in the fourth quarter. Wallace gets some pressure, dumps it over the middle, and Jack Whitford couldn't hit there. The official was between Whitford and the football. A lot of pressure by Chancey Ako, the middle linebacker on Seneca Wallace. You have to like the call, though, of Ron Collins, the defensive coordinator. Third and ten, he brings pressure. He brought pressure on first down, didn't sit back and play conservative. Third and ten, he brings it again, forcing Wallace into a poor throw. Blankenship will punch on and Troy Blankenship back to boot it away. The the Doc, Iowa State's offense, 0 for 6 on third downs in the second half. That's their third, or excuse me, their seventh, three plays and out. And get a call to Boise State's defense. Stopping this offense, and Blankenship nearly gets it blocked. It was tipped. And I take it that's some Gilligan up across midfield. 32-yard punt, return of 12. Take a look at our ESPN game track. Update you on what's happened here in this football game. Ready? Well, you take a look early. Brock Forsey gets into the end zone for his 30. First touchdown this year. Dinwiddie gets the quarterback sneak, which gives him a little cushion at 21 to 10. And then the, the only turnover of the game, a rare fumble by an Iowa State tailback, really cost them an opportunity. Probably the best opportunity they've had here in the second half. Hawkins and company trying to get their first win over a BCS opponent. Big 12, Iowa State. They lost to Arkansas at Arkansas early in the year. Lost to Washington State on this field last year. That pass complete down to about the 44. You can hear the cheers from the crowd. They're saying Fanuki. They're not booing at all. And Boy, he's a senior receiver that's just had a great career out here. 2,500 yards receiving, 128 catches, and has been a valuable special teams performer playing his last game. And I don't know what really, I mean, it's, this is a home crowd. It's a bowl game, but this is a home crowd here for the Broncos, and he will be missed next year. School record 97-yard touchdown catch early in the year against Louisiana Tech. And off inside to Michael. That's David Michael. David Let's check it on the sidelines with Heather Cox. Field, well, one of the most challenging issues for the Humanitarian Bowl Committee has been making Bronco Stadium neutral. It's just like if UCLA were in the Rose Bowl or Miami in the Orange Bowl, there's a challenge of eliminating that local flavor. So the live mascot hasn't been running around when BSU scores. You don't hear the typical first down cheer when the Broncos move the chains. And there's no special effects on Bronco Vision screen when there's a big BSU play. But you guys, you get the sense down here with the 30,000 seats that were available. Most of them went to the Bronco faithful. You certainly get the sense that there's a home crowd advantage for sure. Wow, they censored the Bronco, huh? <laughs> we're taking that serious. Boy. Well, Boise State still on top by 11. Back with more from the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl in just a moment. Casey Clawson and the Balls battle E.J. Henderson and the Turfs. Capital One Bowl Week continues with the Chick-fil-A Beach Bowl tonight at 7.30 on ESPN. Baby, baby, I got the Choose the Pontiac High Performance Play of the Year. Vote online at ESPN.com. Keyword Pontiac. The winning play will be announced live on the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Pontiac. Fuel for the soul. You have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger, to redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Quite possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. 
With over 90 health club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. ProFlex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new ProFlex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure. And check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web at bowflexultimate.com today. The new Bowflex for ultimate results. Coming up the bottom of the hour over on ESPN2, A.J. Suggs leading Georgia Tech in a Silicon Valley Classic against Fresno State. Trying to put the capper on Chan Gailey's first season right here on ESPN, the Axe of Liberty Bowl. Lots of Hobbs and the Horned Frogs against Colorado State. That's at the bottom of the hour, Doc. And thanks, Reese. That'll be a good one up in Memphis, Tennessee. The Axe of Liberty Bowl coming up. As we are back in Boise, with Boise State 550 away from winning their third humanitarian bowl, the crucial.com humanitarian bowl here at Bronco Stadium. And off to Michael. Breaks one tackle, bounces up, carries tacklers inside the 30 yard line, still on his feet. And he will have the first down and then some. Boy, this offensive line for the Broncos has just had some second half. Scott Huff, Rob Byan, Matt Navis, Jason Turner, and Darren College have really just controlled the line of scrimmage. They're third and one, short yardage goal line. Guys, that, that's an attitude, and they have brought the attitude in the second half. And a little bit of a fake here. They hand it inside. Left side, top of the screen, 10-5, and out of bounds. The 10 run on Tim Gilligan. We've seen that play run a couple of times in the SEC and the ACC, and now Dan Hawkins pulls it out of the playbook. Well, there's the old fumble ruski, and the key is you get up to the line of scrimmage quickly before the defense really has a chance to see what's going on. Snap the ball. Nice job getting set in their stances, and they snapped it quickly and executed it quite well. Gain of 19 by Gilligan. First and goal for the Broncos. Well, they, they don't hold anything back. They're up 21-10. They're, they're still going after the juggler. Nation's leading scorer. Averaging 46.6 points a game. Talking about Boise State. Boise still fighting. Touchdown, Boise State. Uh, there's an example of why he was the offensive player of the year in the Western Athletic Conference and led the nation in scoring, averaging almost 15 points a game. Well, you could put this drive right on the shoulders of that offensive line. They just came off the ball. They have the momentum, and they were just bringing the game to Iowa State. To cap it off, their best back breaks a couple of tackles and follows through with the same kind of attitude this line has set for the entire second half. Rock Forsey, what a career. He said, you know, a lot of guys are playing, and he has not been invited as of yet to a postseason All-Star game. He said, I would love to go play in an All-Star game. Led the country in scoring, record-setting running back, as Goliath guys extra point is no good. The kick is off, so there's a look at Brock Force said, I would love one more chance to play football, maybe in an all-star game in the postseason. You know, you talk to him and he you, you ask him, of all the records you hold, what one is the most valuable to you? And he says it's the career touchdown record. He had 65 career touchdowns coming into this game. He said, that's the one that means the most because it's really accumulation of my entire four-year career here. Not just one year, one thing. Of the 65 touchdowns, 47 of them on the ground, 18 of them in the air. It also shows how versatile he is. Five different times this year, he scored four touchdowns in a single football game. Tulsa, San Jose State, UTEP, Rice, and Nevada. He scored five times in each of those football games. You can measure speed with a stopwatch, but it takes a game to measure your heart, and he's got a huge heart. What a young man. Brock Forsey from nearby Meridian, Idaho, an outskirts here in Boise. That scoring drive for the Broncos, by the way, five plays, 49 yards, a minute and 51 seconds. Ella Jones' kick is up and deep at the goal line, and it's young. Through 30-yard line, and that's where Iowa State will take over. Lance Young returns the kick and is brought down by Clint Burr. Tomorrow, Cowboys.
Capital One Bowl Week concludes on ESPN at 9.30 Eastern. Chris Lee and Kirk break down all of the day's bowl games on a special edition of College Game Day presented by Discover Card. Then at 11 a.m., John DeVar and the Michigan Wolverines meet Rex Grossman and the number 20 Florida Gators in the Outback Bowl. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Congratulations, by the way, to John Thompson, defensive coordinator for Florida. He's the new head coach at East Carolina. He'll be headed up to Greenville. In that bowl game. Swing pass out to Hiawatha Rutland. That'll gain about seven. Doc, as you if you have watched the second half unfold, nobody for the Cyclones has really stepped up and made a play offensively or defensively. They just have not been able to get to any kind of rhythm, any kind of momentum on their side, and nobody's really stepped up and forced that to happen. Sort of like their season. They dominated the first half here. The first half of the year, the Cyclones were 6-1. and one. Second half, they have struggled. Second half of their season, they were 1-5. That's sort of the story here for Iowa State in 2002. And one of the concerns Dan McCartney had was when bad things start to happen, do we get down on ourselves? Not give up by any means, but you just get down and you start to look for more bad things to happen. And when Boise State came out in that third quarter with that wave of momentum, bad things started to happen, and some of his players didn't step up. Critical third down for the Cyclones, trying to keep the drive alive. They toss it up, it's sort of a fade, and overthrows Jack Wicker. These cornerbacks for Boise State, Gabe Franklin and Julius Brown, have done a wonderful job taking the wide receivers out of the game. When you can come up and press cover the wide receivers, the adjustments are going to be the fade down the sideline, the deeper pass, and it's a very low percentage pass. Takes a lot of confidence in your defensive coordinator to call that kind of defense, and Ron Collins has that confidence. All right, fourth and three. And Collins says, we got to go for it. We're down by 17 with less than four or five minutes to go in this one. Radical fourth down. Santa Wallace has a receiver over the middle and makes the catch for the first down. Great clutch catch by Jamal Montgomery, the junior out of Long Beach. Nice job of keeping Wallace in the backfield, but watch how he gets his shoulders turned. Going to the left is the most difficult throw to make. Watch how he gets those shoulders turned. Those a nice ball that Jamal Montgomery goes up. Not an easy catch, makes a good one though. Wallace to the sidelines. Rutland gets out of bounds, we'll be in a couple. Boise State gladly will give up the passes underneath. Try and get as many players as you can over there. Sure tackle. They don't want to give up the quick strike and let Iowa State get themselves back into this game without taking a couple minutes off the clock. And coming up next, we'll have the Memphis, Tennessee, where the Horn Frogs and the Rams will get it on. Two conference champions and the Axe of Liberty Bowl. Coming up. After four minutes and six seconds more of this one here in Boise, Idaho. Well, was plenty of time and overthrows the receiver. That was Lane Danielson who had double coverage down about the 30-yard line. Well, it was double coverage, and for this much time, watch how much time Wallace has in the pocket. You usually don't have receivers covered this well when the quarterback has that much time. It's just hard to stay with those guys. But again, this defense is doing a nice job, and Dan Hawkins has really got to be proud of the way his defense has responded. His entire team has responded, especially in the second half. Kenny Law, the coach of the second half, he's the one of the coaches only one or two who stayed. When Dirk Cutter left for Arizona State two years ago. Great job by Lowell and Cutter. Wallace tucks it, takes off. Needs to get to the 40-yard line. Has the first down, scampers down, and dives out of bounds. Inside the 30, they'll mark him at the 29. For first down for Iowa State. You talk about Dan Hawkins, and he was one of only two coaches that stayed when Dirk Cutter went to Arizona State. As his program has had a lot of success, one of the issues he's going to have to face is he's going to have assistants that become hot topics, and they're going to be, it's going to be harder for him to keep those people here because other teams are going to want them. Well, fortunately, Gene Blameyer and company signed the head coach, Dan Hawkins, to a five-year extension and doubled his salary. It's taking the paper this week here, so they want to keep him around. They had Houston that here for years ago, Arkansas. Cutter is at Arizona State. They want to keep Hawkins here. 
perfect pass down inside the 20 again. That's Lane Danielson. And now the passing uh, offense beginning to heat up a little bit for, for Iowa State. Both these coaches, Dan McCartney's done a great job with Iowa State. They're 23 and 14 since 2000. And one of the hardest conferences in, in the entire NCAA. And we talked earlier about their brutal road schedule they played this year. And most teams, did, most people did not think they would have a chance to even qualify for a bowl game because of that. But he got them playing hard and they maintained at the end of the year, got themselves into one. As the pass is over, when you talk about McCartney, it's his eighth year. At year four and at year five, they still were under 500. And it took a special administration to stick with Gene Smith, who's now the athletic director at Arizona State, was there at Iowa State and said, you're our man. We're going to stick with you. It's what's going to pay dividends. Same thing happened at Virginia Tech with Frank Beamer. They stuck with Frank, and look what's happened with that program. And now the last four years, as you mentioned, 2000, they're 9 and 3, 7 and 5, 7 and 6, and again, 7 and 6 this year. So they're beginning to win games and really make a difference in Ames with Dan McCarty and company. He's done a great job. The players love playing for him. He's, he's very emotional, very animated, and, and they've got a good one there. They would be lucky to hold on to him. And there's again Lane Danielson. Takes the catch. Just a simple route. You see the zone coverage drop. Nice job by Danielson throttling down when you get in between a zone coverage. You don't want to run into coverage. Man-to-man, -man, you run across it. Zone, you sit in the windows, let your quarterback find you. Iowa State trying to get on the board. They fade to the end zone and almost picked off. Lance Young was the receiver. Julius Brown, one of the defenders there. Also, Wes Nurse Wallace is back there. Iowa State doing a nice job moving down the field, but they're taking time off of the clock, down to three minutes to go now. See, Wallace had to throw this ball a little bit earlier before the coverage could recover and get back there. He knows that. He just hasn't been that kind of day for him. He, he just has not had things go his way. Second and goal. starting to come alive here at Bronco Stadium for the end zone and rolling the flag is Lance Young feeling he might have been bumped and I believe he might have a little bit of an argument there. Oh, I, I think Julius Brown just played that perfectly. He read the route. You see the three-step drop. You see the receiver plant to cut inside and Brown beat him to the ball. I think he probably was bumped but I think it's because Brown had the inside position. Two minutes to play here in the sixth annual crucial.com humanitarian ball. Wallace calls his own number and can't get there. Wes Nurse, the junior free safety, makes his ninth tackle of the day. But this defense has played outstanding. When you run this kind of draw, you need to hesitate a little bit longer. Let the rush come up, Phil. Let Wes nurse the safety. See pass, drop back. I think Seneca rushed that a little bit. Brock Forsey has been the story today for the Broncos. Three touchdowns running, contributed on special teams, contributed in the passing game, overcame the injury with the hard hit right here, came back in, and has helped wind this clock down, and this is his last touchdown, maybe the last touchdown as a Bronco. You know, we mentioned, we mentioned, and he is the Capital One player of the game, Brock Forsey. That's a surprise, isn't it? <laughs> How about that, huh? Three rushing touchdowns today. Well, it's good for him to be able to cap off a wonderful career with this kind of performance and a, another bowl victory. You know, and I've got to believe he said he's, he has not been invited to a postseason all-star game. The folks in Orlando, maybe the Gridiron Classic, East-West, Hula Bowl, Senior Bowl, somebody called this guy and let him play one more game. Well, he also won his bowl in 99, a Big West title in Boise State, a trip to the Crucial.com 
Humanitarian Bowl versus Louisville. The Broncos led by Brock Forsey, who gained 292 all-purpose yards. The game featured 10 lead changes and 65 total points, including three fourth-quarter lead changes. Boise State's Davey Melikong scored the game-winning touchdown as the Broncos earned their first-ever Division 1A bowl victory. Fourth and goal for the Cyclones. Wallace hands it off in reverse to Danielson. Has some room. There's one guy to beat. Let him block. And touchdown for Iowa State. What a block by Lance Young. His fellow wide receiver came back. Without that block, Danielson doesn't get in. Boy, it was a great block. And it looked as though Julius Brown had played that very well. The play took a little longer to develop than you would like it to. And Brown had a chance to recover, came up. But Lance Young kept his head in front and just threw a, a crucial, crucial play block. Danielson on the touchdown. 27-17 with his extra points. You get an onside kick. You never know. Adam Benneke on to try to make it a 10-point deficit. And the snap is fumbled. And the conversion will fail. So it's 11 points. The extra point attempt is no good. with 234 here to go in this one. Take a look and look as though the snap were, were behind, was behind the holder. Really not a chance to, to get that ball down. And as soon as it falls down, nice job by Benneke just getting on it. Take a look at the touchdown again on the reverse. Danielson, nice speed, gets out to the outside. But watch again the block by A.D. Young right there. Good job keeping his head and shoulders in front. Danielson just did get that ball across the goal line before he loses control of it. Not by more than a yard or two. Boy, what a stretch by Danielson to get it out there. <laughs> that might be a sports center highlight. I drove 20 hours with these people for this for this win. Yeah, these folks uh, came all the way from Ames, Iowa. Our hotel was full of Iowa State Cyclone fans who come up here to cheer their Cyclones on. There's a scoring drive, by the way, 14 plays, 59 yards, 246. Yeah, and, and that 246 isn't a long scoring drive usually, but at this stage of the game, that's a very long time. Now they'll try the onside kick here and see if they can get a lucky bounce and get down and stay on offense. No matter how many times you practice it, you just got to get lucky. Banneke with the kick and right into the stomach of West Nurse to free safety. Seneca Wallace disappointed, I know, playing his last game as a Cyclone. We talked earlier, Heather told you some of the struggles he's had to get to this point, and I think he can play quarterback in the NFL without question. Struggle today. Had the injury, you question how much that bothered him. Maybe the knee tightened up a little bit, but he's got a future ahead of him. Coach, you said some of the NFL scouts came in and watched between 20 and 40 hours of film on Seneca Wallace, and they all agreed this young man can play at the next level. The question is, will he be a quarterback? We'll see on the handoff. Yeah, yeah. Capital One Bowl Week continues with two games on ESPN. Today at 3.30 Eastern, Bradley Van Pelt and the Mountain West champion, number 21, Colorado State Rams battle, USA co-champion TCU in the 44th annual Axe Liberty Bowl. Then at 7.30 Eastern, Casey Clawson leads Tennessee against the Maryland Terrapins in the 35th annual Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl at the Georgia Dome. You cannot Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl in the Georgia Dome. And take a look at the Bowl Challenge Cup. Now, counting this football game here, take a look. Big Ten unbeaten. Big East 2-1, ACC 2-1. Big win for Wake Forest. Jim Grove and company yesterday over, over Oregon. Big 12 is 3-2. There are two tough losses, Colorado and Nebraska. Colorado losing a heartbreaker to Wisconsin in overtime. Both upsets. Both upsets in those games. Great job by Eli Manning and company getting it done. In the Shreveport, beating Nebraska, the Ole Miss Rebs. Iowa State down to one timeout left here. Boise State still pounding the ball. And Dan McCartney said after the season they got beat by Connecticut. 
his team needed a break. They were just mentally drained. Morrissey on the handoff, straight ahead. And he'll get about two and a half. Let's, go. Let's check in on the sidelines once again with Heather. Playing a bowl game a year ago, Boise State beat then undefeated number eight Fresno State and offensive powerhouse Hawaii, but they didn't get it done against middle of the road rice, which left them out of bowl consideration, and quite honestly, it left them bitter. So during spring ball, they came up with their own motto and decided that they would control their own destiny and leave no doubt. So they've been wearing t-shirts that say leave no doubt all season long, and in fact, the seniors have already decided the team have already designed the team the WAC championship rings on the underside it says left no doubt they got it done this season jerry indeed they did and what a job to get here and these players the seniors are here were here under dirt cutter and dan hawkins by the way was a uh, was a recruiting coordinator under cutter for three years when he recruited these kids back in 1998 when they came in as, as true freshmen and uh, dirt, by the way they mentioned how what a job dirt cutter did getting this program up and running houston nut was before cutter but nut came in then cutter and uh, I happened to be with uh, Cutter and company at Arizona State in the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl earlier in last week. And uh, what a job he did, has done with the Sun Devils and almost pulled off the upset over Kansas State. Led for most of the football game. Well, Brock Forsey told us that there was some skepticism when Hawkins took over. Are we going to continue to have the same kind of success? And the early success convinced them of that. Pass downfield to the fullback, Matt Strophus. And he waits and he waits and he waits and the ball finally gets there. He makes the catch. First and goal, Bronco. Well, this is typical whether it's Kirk Cutter, Dan Hawkins, the offense has it changed. Incredibly productive, and, and it's because of this kind of play calling. It's third and four. You don't play conservative. You learn a little play action. You get the ball to your fullback, who's only caught 11 passes this season. And they just keep coming after you, regardless of the score. They're going to play Boise State style of football. Boise State averaged over 51 points a game during their conference contest, 8-0 in the whack. Then we the shovel pass to Forsey and nothing doing. We talked earlier, Forsey's had a couple of games where he's had four touchdowns in a game. You see the Broncos trying to get him another game. He's got three right now, trying to get him that fourth touchdown as the clock is ticking down. Coming up next, we have the Memphis, Tennessee for the Axe of Liberty Bowl. Colorado State, ranked 21st. Sonny Lubick's Rams taking on TCU, the Horned Frogs. And the Axe of Liberty Bowl should be a good one coming up in Memphis at the conclusion of this one. Morrissey tries to cut it back, still stopped short of the goal line. Talking earlier, Doc, about how Dan McCarty just said his team was mentally drained that last game of the year. They played such a tough schedule. It, it, I don't think any team could have withstood that kind of barrage. And he felt his team would be mentally ready to play today. They came out strong in the first half, but they just couldn't sustain it. And when Boise State came out with that strong surge in the second half, Iowa State just didn't have an answer. in the end zone. Touchdown for the Broncos, Lou Fanuki. From <laughs> three yards out, then Woody to Fanuki to add six more for Boise State. Well, you see Dan McCartney not very happy. Hawkins throwing the ball up ahead, 27-16 with less than a minute to go. Throwing the ball under a minute. Nick Kalai Kai for the extra point. Kick is off and go. Seconds remain, and uh, there is Dan Hawkins. Take a look at the touchdown again. Little play action. Fanuki coming all the way across from the right side to the left side, and a nice touch on that ball by Dinwiddie. 
really started slowly, completing only one of his first seven passes, but rebounded well. And when they started opening things up, you could see he really gained some confidence, and that was the difference in this game. Coming up next, the Axa Liberty Bowl from Memphis, Tennessee. Colorado State, the Rams of Sonny Lubick and Company. Taking on the Horn Frogs. Who do you like in that game? Tell you what, it's a tough one there because TCU plays great defense. Colorado State, they just managed to win. I've done both teams this year, and they both are fabulous football. This should be a great football game. Colorado State seems to come up with wins in big games. They seem to prepare very well. Horn Frogs, Conference USA champions, and Mountain West champions, Colorado State Rams. That's coming up next. And right now, the WAC champions getting it done. Boise State ranked 15th in the nation, 8-0 in the Western Athletic Conference. They are 27 seconds away from winning the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Well, how about the career of Seneca Wallace? Only two years in Ames, Iowa. What the, look at the records. 3,245 yards passing in a single season. 3,670 total offense. And the career numbers in just two years as quarterback in Ames. Well, and we talked about it earlier. I think without question he can play quarterback in the NFL. I think he throws the ball well. Some people have compared him to Antoine randall -L. I think he throws the ball better than randall -L. But he also has the speed and the quickness to be able to play some other positions if they wanted to put him there until he developed. The only question mark people said about his uh, being his quarterbacking in the NFL may have been his height, 5'10". Right at 5'10", 195. The whistles will stop playing here with 25 seconds to go. Well, he would be an asset to any team. Snap. First you take a look at Seneca, his numbers today, 13 of 35, 107 yards, one touchdown, 11 rushes for 71 yards. Of course, he missed over a quarter in the first half with the knee injury. And glad that he could at least come back and finish out the game. His last year was right there. Final 20 seconds of this one. Wallace uh, unloads it, and it's short. Upfield in for Lance Young. Well, the blue turf has been very good to the Broncos of Boise, Idaho. They were 25 and one over the past four years coming into this game, and now you can make it 26 and one for Dan Hawkins' troops. Capacity crowd sold out stadium today, Bronco Stadium, 30,000 strong for the sixth annual Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. looking and overthrows the receiver you know we need to mention the fact that the humanitarian portion of this bowl that is the world sports humanitarian hall of fame take a look at the forcey there on the sidelines and in april they will induct into this hall of fame the harlem globetrotters and steve young other members of the humanitarian hall of fame mary lou retton tom landry roberto clemeni chichi rodriguez arthur ash and others and watch here, they're chasing him with the, with the bucket. They caught the coach, and Forsey's going to hold him. Here comes the Gatorade bucket. That, that's a losing battle. He, he was going to get so few the way. He just gave up. And pass incomplete. There will be one more play in this one. Take a look. Uh, all of, okay, all right, guys, you win. You know, you, you always oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you always wonder how much they really don't like that. I think he'd uh, be glad to take that. And there's Huff, the big senior center. What a job the big offensive line did. Huff, Navist, Vian, the three seniors up front. Really the difference in the second oh. half, how they controlled the line of scrimmage. They came out and played physical football. Both sides of the ball, not only the offensive line, but the defense as well. Play of this one. Seneca Wallace appropriately will tuck it and try to do it himself, and he just can't quite get there. Once again, our final score in the sixth annual Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Boise State 34, Iowa State 16. 
This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Coming up next, the Axel Liberty Ball from Memphis, Tennessee.